I met a gypsy. That's why I had to come correct with the Dirt Studios today, because I was like... You had to, man. I knew what was happening on the other all, side. All I'm saying... Yeah, all I'm going to say is this fade is about 45 minutes old, if that. <laughs> oh, you know my mean? boy. So, you know what I'm saying? You might be the first dude to ever get a haircut for the podcast, and I fucking like it. <laughs> hey, you just said it. You had to come right. I, I had to come correct, man. I ain't coming I in knew, here. I step it, man. None of that half-ass stuff. I knew. I fucking knew. Um, oh, yeah. We're, we're, all right, we're on. I'll finish this fucking thing. Bacon egg McMuffin for the <clears throat> boys this morning. Um, what do you remember about that night in 2010, Motocross Nations? <laughs> <laughs> Should we just go yeah, there off the rip? What about. <laughs> Should we go there? We're just well, off the rip. I, I just like want to see what you. Seventeen, so you know. Yeah, how old were you then? Seventeen, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, you were in the. Oh, wait, pull this up to your face real quick, just like. Pull it in a little bit closer. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, get keep coming. Yeah, get More? that bat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll be out here. Yeah. We gotta, hey, we gotta hear that voice, man. You got that voice. We gotta hear like all of it, you know? Yeah. I, <clears throat> check, check. Yeah, man, I gotta, I'm like a two stroke, bro. That's why I got this green tea here. I'm trying to get that thing cleaned out. You know what I'm saying? I get a little, a little like, uh, I need, I need to change the jetting a bit sometimes, you know? You, that, that plug can fail pretty easy. Oh, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, I've never told the story. I was gonna actually, I was gonna wait for Dino. I want to let Dino tell like his angle. Of this. He fucked me over that weekend, like big time, and I fully had to take one for the team. But uh, yeah, so now that you now that you say that, I I know I remember what you're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, all right. So I don't. We won't get too much into it. But uh, the first time, just for I, I really want Dino to tell that full story. Cause that shit was fucking funny, dude. Like, funny, funny. And uh, but yeah, the first time I ever met Chief Lucas was uh, was when I was in Motocross Nations 2010. And I don't know how you ended up with Wes Williams ID, who was like 20 fucking five at the time. <laughs> he was 17. And uh, but the funniest part is, so we went to this club in Denver. And uh, <laughs> was it the first time that you ever been to a club, or have you been to a club before that? We don't know. We actually don't have to put this I in still, the podcast either. <laughs> yeah, no, I st- I've still never been in a club. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, fair, no, fair, yeah, fair. Uh, I don't know, man. I was I was 17, bro. <laughs> I was young, you know, just trying to have some but fun with the boys. The funniest part of it was, so you had this ID from Wes, and Wes was like, tw- I think Wes was probably like 25 or, or 26, and then we looked nothing alike whatsoever nothing alike and then you get into this club with uh with this id and then you proceed to walk in to the place where they put the x on your hand <laughs> to like to say that it was 18 and i was like bro you just blew it like you just got in this club this shit worked and then you walked and got the x and i was like all right respect he's 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 really out here trying to get that shit done i don't i don't even remember that but you know yeah, that good for bit. me, right? Just being a solid guy, man. Good for me. Yeah, that bit that bit stuck with me. I was like, oh, he really about that life. He ain't, he ain't into this party <laughs> life. He wants he wants to be in the club, but he also wants to get up and murder. And I was like, I respect that. You got to go to work too, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that was the first time, and I was a super fan of uh, of Justin Bogle ever since. And now we're here. Like, what? What would that be? Tw- Eleven years later? Twelve years later? Yeah, 11 years, man. I'm 28 years old, so yeah, I mean, I was 17, so. Yeah, that shit's insane, eh? So, uh. Crazy. Time flies, man. Before we get into it, Drake or Kanye, need to go there first. I know you've listened to both albums. Certified lover boy, man. I, yeah. <laughs> come on, too easy. I am, yeah. I am lover boy, let's get, let's get that out of the way, man. Yeah, you a lover boy. You a I'm a lover, boy. not a fighter. I am, yeah, is what it is. Unless you have to throw down on Colt, and then you're a fighter. I can handle I can handle mine in that situation for sure. And Colt knows it, so we don't even have to talk about it. He knows. Dude, yeah, so I haven't put any time into the Kanye album for whatever reason. So when people have been asking me about 
like, oh, what do you think of the Drake coin? I put on the Drake album first, and it has not come off the record player just yet. There is some absolute heat on that album, and I know that uh, you got mm. respect for that game. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Drake stan, and I have been for like a decade. So, I mean, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm playing Certified Lover Boy all day, but I mean, I'm a big Kanye fan too. A lot of questionable actions maybe in the last couple of years but over the course of history i'm a big kanye fan too so there's a few joints on donda that i'm that i'm rocking with but i'm not really front to back in that one clb i can front to back yeah yeah big time yeah I feel you yeah, can throw that. clb on in the whip with some girls you know what i mean you can't really throw donda on in the whip and drive around so donda donda, donda time in a place donda 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 <laughs> That ain't really fucking. That ain't really like uh, whipping chicks <laughs> with music, is it? <laughs> I mean, depends, I guess. Yeah, I get. I, yeah, that's true. That would be some chicks that would be fucking super. You never know, shit. man. You never know. So what's the what's the uh, what's the CLB tracks that you're feeling the most? <clears throat> My favorite one is "In Too Deep." Yeah. The beginning, the first half of that one, the get throwed sample. You know what I mean? Anytime, anytime people like give the nod to Houston, like Houston rap, yeah, I'm in because we grew up on that. I love it. If anyone ever, you know, it's anything UGK, Zero, Trey the Truth, Chameleon Air, all of them dudes, man, like big, big, big fans of them growing up. So anytime anyone does that, like as soon as I heard the like the sample at the beginning, I was like, all right, I like this one. So, and then those harmonies on that one party singing, man crazy that shit's so dope yeah he's he's a fucking legitimate g the um actually i'll just i want to pull oh, where is my phone i'll look at the track list because i can't remember all the names but um the first track is fucking insane i'm I should have this pretty much open um yeah that champagne poetry is insane uh love all insane D this is a thing with drake too right so i remember when uh like hotline bling come out i'm like fuck this shit's corny as hell and then you're like a week into it or you know three days into it can't get out of your head tootsie slide this is fucking lame dude this is lame as hell fucking another three days into that track you're like dude this is actually fucking dope and then i listened to uh to way too sexy instant like so that's my generation too like that i'm too sexy for my shirt like i'm fucking old so i remember that shit coming out when i was young and like i remember being in clubs in my hometown before i ever moved away from home and like that shit came on in clubs and that was actually a thing so i kind of like lived through that i've got context on that and then after i was like ah this is all right and same fucking deal dude found myself yesterday just like had that beat in my head and i'm like you motherfucker, you've done it again to me, bro. And now all I can do is play that track. And then uh, then we go, no friends in the industry. It's back that to one, back. On, bro. Back to back Absolute with Knife Talk. But crazy. Both those two, crazy. Yeah. So, hey, uh, is, is Jacob in the studio still? No, he's uh, not. Can you text Jacob and just ask him to come in and turn his headphones down? Because I can hear my voice in his headphones. We on that fucking production life, bro. I know you know what it is. Dude, it's crazy. Um, it's the kind yeah, of stuff so, that Brad will hit me about and yell at me for when I'm recording. Yeah, so good segue then into into your music. Um, you've been uh, Chief Luca for a long ass time. Um, where did that like your initial love for music come in because i remember even when i met you way back in you know 2010 you were just like cool as fuck on the music vibe super steezy on a bike but you kind of i don't know you were like the only kid that i'd ever met that embodied that kind of lifestyle from moto and then i was i expected you to take that into your uh like make that a part of your career but that was something you've always like kept separate like super separate even like almost like secret so I, I always wonder i mean i get it but there's a part of me that's like kind of sad that that's how that shit went down for you so that's a long question to well, unpack but. 
For sure, but I will agree with you on that. But at the same time, I think kind of everything with my career, like at this point I'm in right now, I feel like I kind of got a bit of a second chance, maybe like a little second wind where I don't have to say, man, I wish I knew then what I know now. I feel like I know quite a bit now. And I think people have been able to tell lately I haven't been so, I, I haven't had, I haven't been worried at all, like whatsoever about what anyone thinks about me, whether they like it or not. I just decided finally, I said, you know what? I'm a grown ass man. I'm gonna be myself fully. And if people love it, great. If they hate it, I can't do anything about that because it's just who I am. So I think with the way I ride, the way I dress, music, all that stuff, like it just, it's not like I purposefully with intention do any of these things. It's just kind of the way I am. And I think with everything you do, your personality comes out. Mm -hmm. But I also think that when I was younger, really young like when we met do you remember i got i made like 700 dollars that night freestyling in front of everyone at the uh Dude. Alpine star rig after the race yes yes and hansen was, was beatboxing, beatboxing and i was freestyling. Yes. yeah yes Dude. that was that was legendary actually fuck that was pretty I legendary i was 17 years old yes in front of every heavyweight in the industry sitting there yes, in front of me Dude. looking at me and i don't know if i was just too naive dumb or what to not think about that but i just was like yeah let's go and you know just spit some bars <laughs> they were probably horrible i don't remember real freestyle but hey uh it's pretty legendary looking back on it but yeah man i don't know it's just my personality bro like i i everyone that knows me especially being around the races like i like to have fun not like a fun like being an idiot just it's just my personality man like i like to talk and joke around with people and you know what I mean? I like to have fun, and that's why I like having my friends around. But, you know, uh, I like to keep it. I think for me, it's tough for me to. The series is really long. Mm. The year that we have, the training that we do, everything is. It's really difficult, and there's not much of a break. And for me, I think the way I do anything, I need to be excited, and I need to be, like, interested in it, to want to do it. So I do get, I think earlier in my career, I, it was easier for me to get burnt out because I think I was so focused on trying to be serious, trying to like be super gnarly and train all day, every day and do all this stuff. And just my personality, the way I am, dude, I need to be having fun on my dirt bike because that's, that's where I get my confidence from. I don't mm. get my confidence from like doing 17 forties during the week. Like, dude, Coop and Joey have been riding with me lately and uh, <laughs> it's crazy because they'll literally be like five, six seconds a lap faster than me all week and then on the weekend it's like not that bad, you know? Mm. It's just during the week it's a little harder for me to get like amped up. I'll go last on the parade lap usually, throw a whip or a, a trick or something over the, one of the jumps and if I hear like the fans like yelling, I'll stop and rev my bike at them. Like, I don't know, dude. I Like, I love this shit, you know? Like, that gets me fired up and that's what one of the big things I do love about this is you know, this weekend I crashed, uh, lap one, I think, right in front of my teammate. Joey just runs runs me over, right? Of course. Why wouldn't it be my teammate? And I'm rolling off the track, like, dying. Like, do I want to get up or do I just want to lay here and maybe they just bury me here? You know, like, I just yeah. want to sit here and cry. But then, <laughs> but then the crowd around me, they start chanting my name and then they start, like, yelling. And I was like, I felt like Rocky. I was like, nah, hell with that. I got to get up. It's like, Climbed up, walking back to the bike, gave him a, one of these, got on my bike, revved at him, gave him a look, they were pumped. And then I heard them cheering for me so loud the rest of the race. But I swear, dude, it gave me like a nice boost to be I able got, to get up because I, I was like, I was that. hurting so bad. But it was so fire, bro, it was so fire. Yeah, dude, that, that's like a, it's a bit of an unfortunate paradox in our sport right is that and i mean this kind of speaks to the instagram post that you made the other day well i guess it was just the interview that you gave and then you posted on on instagram and then it that like that shit blew up man because you could tell like that was like a genuine dude talking like that wasn't no <clears throat> like moto guy giving a post moto speech like that was you being super honest about where you were at and like wanting to have fun and the there's a bit of a paradox in that in the way that that's not what the industry wants to see and they want you to like they just want to see grind 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 um and it's like 
dude it's the same for Roxon man like he's the kind of guy what he needs to he needs to dip out and surf and then be on the wakes wake boat and then like fucking ride a mountain bike but like make jumps not do the you know like go up into the fucking trails and and you know just burn his legs out like but then it's like as soon as you go in that direction then you just get painted with this brush it's like you almost have to wear this fucking a on you you know like oh that dude isn't serious like that dude doesn't care and it's like dude i mean fuck even for me like i on this i i work a lot but like i have to go do shit i have to dip out on work like even yesterday there was some stuff i could have uploaded to youtube i had to go to train i had to go to jiu-jitsu like that shit i need that shit and i have to that takes away from like my fucking job but i know that on the other side of that training session is like a better version of me that's more prepared to work or you know for your case it'd be like more prepared to win exactly exactly i think i do think that it's changing a bit now yeah. <clears throat> i think that uh i think a lot of the the next generation that's coming through they're not very concerned with any of that you know they grew up on social media they grew up just in a different era a different time so they're not really concerned with that where i grew up in the era after like the rickies and people like that where yeah Ricky really screwed it all up and made it seem like it was like reality to be able to just win all the time and be that gnarly when it's not Ricky was lightning in the bottle man he was just that once in a lifetime just there's a reason he's the goat because that's not normal you know so I kind of messed up the whole industry's outlook on what we can should and would be doing if we weren't doing what they did before but Mm. for me I look at it like I'm in that spot right now too where I feel like as an adult, as a man, I'm confident enough in myself to be okay with whatever the repercussions are of me being me. So I'm a little more open to just being me where when I was young, you know, I just, I think I was just young and didn't know a lot. So I thought, okay, maybe I got to act a certain way to, you know, you don't want to piss anyone off. You don't, you know, you want to get, you want to have a job. Like that's all we have. You know what I mean? Like. And talking about the interview that I did, that I posted the other day, like, I'm pretty honest to a fault, man. Like, I'm pretty much an open book. Like, I don't even, whether I mean to be or not, it is what it is. I just can't help it. You know, I I don't, I have a way harder time lying than I do just being open, man. Like, I'll just, I'd rather just say it and get ahead of it because like, I don't know, like, it's not embarrassing to me. Like, yeah, I'm out of shape right now. Yeah, I got this going on, whatever. Like, I'm working on it. It is what it is. There's no reason for me to lie about it and hide stuff. Like that's corny anyways like i'm always gonna try my best and be as good as i can but shit man i'm a human too you know and bro like i think i commented this on that post but i was like hey man i got a ktm in my shed you make me want to ride it that's your fucking job that's your job i don't give a fuck if you win that's amazing though it's amazing because honestly this whole thing racing riding it doesn't matter if you're racing at the level I'm at right now, where you're pissed off and struggling because you're getting 12th, or if you're just riding on the weekends for fun at your local track, motorcycles are so dope. They're just mm-hmm. awesome, dude. Like, ever since I was, the first time I saw one, I was like four years old, and I just knew that's what I'm doing. Don't know how, don't know what, but that's what I'm doing. Because whatever that is, I was just enamored by it, and it never really changed. You go through periods throughout your career where you, when I turned pro, I was very confident in what I felt I was going to do. And then injuries just kept coming and coming. And then I was, you know, next thing you know, the train's off the tracks and I didn't win nearly as much as I thought I would. You know, I thought, oh, dude, I'll, I can win, you know, however many championships, but it just didn't work out that way, but that's okay. You know, it's stuff happens, but, um, you get a little jaded at points from stuff like that because you feel like you put your self-worth in it when you're young, mm-hmm. you don't know any better, and so you've done. You you see, because you're not stupid, you're like you can pick up on people's energy and things that are going on. Mm-hmm. You can see that like, okay, well my phone is literally about to like spontaneously combust after I get on the box, but if I don't, if I get 12th because I crashed, like my mom and like Colt and Brad text me, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's it. 
But when you're young, you don't really have the understanding, I don't think, for me at least, I can only speak for myself, to really understand that like, okay. That you can't be prepared this shit for that is what I do, happens. and yes, exactly, exactly. And you gotta go through it because there's nothing like experience. With age comes wisdom. I'm getting a couple of gray hairs right now. You know, unfortunately, I think I'd rock the salt and pepper pretty pretty fire though. Like I'm I'm cool with yeah, that, but would. I must be getting smarter because I got some gray hairs. But I think when when I was young, I just didn't really understand that it wasn't my whole entire self worth in how I did on the weekends. You know, where now I'm a I'm a grown man and I understand that like I've got a group of incredible friends. My family's awesome and they love me no matter what. You know, like. And I still get to do what I love. And even if I'm not racing at the highest level, I'm gonna be in this sport, man, because I just love being around it, you know? I, I love riding and I love being around the, even the industry, you know? People say this and that about the industry, but it's, that's no, life, it's man. Dope. Everything dope, that you dude. do, every, every industry's the same, dude. Everything's got its pitfalls and its ups and downs, but dude, you gotta take everything good and the bad. Like there, there can't be good without bad. So there has yeah. to be some stuff that isn't ideal, but that's just life, man. It is what it is. You can't sit there and complain about it all day because you'll miss how damn beautiful this stuff is, you know? Yeah, dude. No, I totally agree, man. And I think that, you know, that there's so much value in what you just said, like not just for, um, not just for you, but that, like that shit's valuable for everybody to know that. And, and I think it's super valuable. Like guys like, dude like dino man like i fucking love that dude so much like him his mom his dad his sister his wife like holy fuck good people and it's like you need those people to stay in the industry like dean wilson doesn't need to be winning races to be like one of the fucking dopest people that does so much for people like the the two motos that you guys do on a saturday that's just the platform for me you know, and it's like there's one dude that can win. There's 39 dudes that lose. And it's just like the platform is the important thing. It's like, okay, I need Dean Wilson on the fucking start line today so that he can have the platform to go out there, do his thing, make his vlogs, like touch those people, inspire those people. I don't need him to win. And it sounds like, I mean, that's super counterproductive to like the fucking the end goal like everyone wants to win everyone should work towards that but it's like that's not the sword i want to fucking oh, i want to die on you know like and and i think that there is just so much value in in guys like yourself that yeah you're not fucking winning right now and and the podiums aren't flowing and the champagne isn't flowing but it's like the messaging is valuable like you still have a platform you still get to be this dude that everyone can look up to and everyone can cheer for and everyone can see like it's more relatable to watch a struggle you know from a from a rider and when they're being so open about it in the way that that you are like i actually think that shit is empowering for people dude especially like when shit turns around and you get back on the box dude like that's the stuff that can really fucking stick with people like holy fuck dude like bogle struggled hard with shit and like look at him now you know and that's the value like that's the and value and that's the shit we should be searching for <clears throat> i agree 100 percent. i think i think the 90s were so cool because there were personalities and there was different types of stories and different i guess everyone just wasn't the same you know where it got to be like that for a point because mm -hmm. everybody wants to win man and when you think that's what you got to do to win you'll do it you'll do whatever to win but like you said you know, living and dying by winning is tough because it Only doesn't matter who you are, you it. won't win forever. And you Every won't weekend, win forever, two dudes even if you're winning it. all the time. So there's got to be more to you than that, because if that's all there is to you, man, what a what a boring life. So um, for me, I think, like I said, I'm I'm a human being. I have interests. I have hobbies. I have a family. I have friends. I have you know, relationships, I have things that I do, like I make music, I really am passionate about that as well. Um, I'm not like super all the way into it at the moment because obviously I'm trying to be a professional motocross racer and figure this stuff out, but there's more to me than just that, which there's more to Dean Wilson, there's more to Ken Roxon, there's more to Colt Nichols, there's more to all of us, like all of us. Even someone like, you know, being around like Cooper and Joey, like. They're funny, man. Like, 
Joey's hilarious. He just doesn't show it on like Instagram, you know? Yeah. And I think we would all benefit by just being ourselves because even if maybe people don't agree with everything you do, I mean, it's, it's you, man. Like lean into it then if people don't like it, like it's fine, man. Like we don't have to go full WWE style and like, cause I'm yeah. not faking anything. I don't have it in me. I, I think, like I said, it for better or worse, I'm an open book, whether that's helped or hurt me it is what it is because it's just the way I am. So I think, I don't think like faking and being corny and weird is a good move, but I think just being yourself has so much value. And when you struggle, like, man, my career has been such a struggle, bro. Like it's been tough, but at the same time, I'm so damn blessed because when I was 12 years old, this is all I wanted and I have it. I'm finally at this point. I'm a veteran. I've been on factory supported teams for a decade now, even yeah. with all the injuries and all the lack of results and stuff. So in all reality, like, yeah, it's it's been a struggle and a roller coaster, but I can look at it with perspective now and understand that I'm grateful for it because it's it's everything, man. You don't want to have regrets. Sometimes you do, but you can't because where I'm at right now and who I am right this second, I'm fully happy with, man. I'm, I'm very comfortable being me. So if I didn't go through all that stuff, man, if I didn't have all that, man, that, I think just all that heartbreak and pain from believing so much in yourself and in something and not being able to accomplish it and then feeling like, man, is it too late? And then getting back into it, you know, like after I had that last head injury in Glendale in 2020 in that first corner, it was like some serious soul searching, man. Like it was like six months of thinking I'm retired, mm. you know, like I didn't, didn't go, didn't touch a bike, didn't go to the track, nothing for like five months. And I was kind of just being normal and I didn't feel good. Like I didn't feel something in me was telling me, which, you know, hindsight, obviously that's like my soul telling me like, Hey man, it ain't time yet. You got to got to get back on the horse. I think ain't that scary. We've done this before. So that was a going through. It wasn't that fun, but afterwards looking back, it's a beautiful mm. thing for me to have gone through because it showed me how much I love this as I thought I knew before. But then when I felt like, even if it was self-imposed, when I felt like it was being taken away, I was like very unhappy you know, mm. just at the core of my being, I was just like, man, something's missing. I feel like there's a hole there. And I know every athlete struggles with that when they're done, but I started to feel better just going out to the track and like helping out some of the kids and just being around it and stuff, you know, just if I'm, even if I'm not racing, I need to be around this stuff because this is my life. Mm. This is what I have always wanted to do and always done. So I can't just, I think the issue will arise if you just try to cold turkey what you've done your whole life which yeah. I, I think that uh cause more issues than would do any good oh definitely and and it is finite man and like you're gonna retire as a young dude still and as a young dude with a wealth of knowledge that's come as a result of all that hardship like i got a friend we we're talking last night um and the, the combo was about like i was I was talking about a bunch of stuff I went through as a kid, like kind of gnarly shit. And like, no, I don't really talk about a lot of that stuff on here. And, uh, and they were just like, man, that's probably like, so all that shit that you went through, like that's pretty much why you are where you are now. And I'm like, yeah, that's everyone. Like if you have this life that is just like golden paved for you, that is, that's fucking empty, dude. Like it's, there's a, there's, unless you have some like insane luck where you've got this like road that's just paved for you with gold and then you've got some wise person that you're just lucky enough to be wise enough to listen to that can like deliver you all this information it's like the people that have been through the most fucked up shit they're the ones that end up knowing the most like that's the the real wisdom comes from the most fucked up parts of of your life and you know like you said you're in 2020 and you have that head injury and it's like the darkest time that you're in and then you come through that and there is a point where in hindsight you look back and you're like holy fuck that was the craziest blessing and then i think that the people that do well in life overall 
are the people that every time the rug gets pulled out from underneath them or the fucking head hits the ground and they are sitting in that pit where you were to know like right as you confront that you're like fuck there's a blessing in this man like i'm gonna just keep going until i hit that point where hindsight delivers me this fucking insane wisdom uh around this situation that i've been through and then you go through life and you have setback after setback but all of a sudden it stops feeling like a setback it just starts feeling like a part of this process of growth and change and then things just like the same roadblocks just don't seem like roadblocks anymore at the same time, all that, I love what you just said because it's all exactly how I feel. But at the same time, like everyone goes through stuff, right? Like we all mm. have our sack of rocks to carry. Some bags are different than others, but we've all got our stuff. And it's almost like with, with like training and fitness, like what I'm in the middle of trying to figure out at the moment. Well, once I get my, just for example, once I get, or say like with riding, once you get your sprint speed down, that doesn't mean like, oh, now we're all good because I needed to work on my sprint speed. Well, now now you need fitness for the moto. Okay, well, now you need technique work. Well, now you need starts. And now you need mm. to test the motorcycle. It's like, that's life too. Like, mm-hmm. you think like, oh man, if I could just, oh, right now my issue is I'm not making any money. If I could just figure out a way to make enough money and do this, but then something else will happen. There's another problem that arises because that's life. So it's the same thing with like my career. It's almost like I've, with, with getting older and dealing with like real life stuff as well, you know, I think real life stuff is honestly hard, way harder to deal with than with racing because like I know how to race. I'm a racer. I've known him my whole life. I don't have an issue really performing. Like if I'm on a good bike and I'm fit, I'm pretty confident. So real life stuff's hard, but man, I think it gives you so much perspective. Like one thing that people had told me, Jimmy Button, who I'm very close with, Michael Byrne, who I'm very close with. Uh, Trey Kennard told me this as well. Robbie, all these people, they said, look, dude, once I decided, made the decision, I was gonna race again. It's like, there's a lot of tread left in them boots. Like, it's not time yet. Like, don't listen to people telling you that, oh, you're getting old or whatever. He's like, it's not that. It's it's all about your mindset on it and how, how mm. you feel. It's like, don't listen to, what, and who cares if anyone, what anyone thinks like if you feel like you want to do it and you can still do it and be competitive do it you know and clearly everyone was telling me obviously we don't think you're done because we can tell so uh and i had told jimmy too like right off the bat like hey i'm that's it like i can't keep doing this like i i literally finally crawl up off the mat and then immediately get just knocked out again like just bop right in the face right and Mm. i'm like man i'm just sick of that shit and then he wouldn't tell anybody. Like he wouldn't put out a press release, nothing, right? And obviously, what a G, because bro. he's older and wiser G. than I am. You know what I mean? And he knows better. So, Fuck, and he cares about cool. me as a person. So he knew that if I needed to come back off of where I was at at the moment and back up off that ledge, then mm. I could. So, very grateful for that as well because it could have been a much different path had I not had a couple people around me that really cared about me to kind of help guide me through it i guess you could say yeah man that's so gangster dude that to have to have people in your corner that would be like oh yeah cool you're retired yeah cool yeah i'll do the press release at some point i'll get around to it i'm just busy Mm -hmm. and it's just like just let us do let us do let us do be like oh i'll get to it you know that's fucking gangster dude and that has to feel so good on your end to be like man why isn't he fucking telling anyone i'm done yeah because at the time i was like So when are we doing this? Because, you know, I just want to get it over with, whatever, whatever. And literally, like, he did this for like five months, like didn't do it, you know, didn't really tell anybody. And, you know, and then one day I I literally remember I woke up that day. I was home alone, woke up that day and I just felt better. Like, as weird as that sounds, I just felt better. And I was like, I think I'm going to go try to ride today. I went to my parents' house, got a parked down by the old shop at my dad's house and rode my old track from when I was a kid that hasn't been worked on or ridden in 10 years. And it just, I was like, man, all right. I left that day and I called my mechanic and, and burner and the team. And I was like, all right, I need, I need to get this stuff figured out because I'm, I'm racing outdoors. 
So that's so it's pretty sick. funny, man. All that within like one day, it just you know turned all the way around. So, so what what this is a result of the Glendale crash, the 2020 Supercross crash, and then you got knocked out pretty bad, and then you were done essentially in your mind, and then so you you had like what five months off off the bike and then you get back on and then that was the day where it clicked and then you went and raced outdoors have i got the timeline right yep that's spot on and honestly i wasn't ready for outdoors it was a rough first half of the season for sure but i i needed to get back into it and luckily for me i had the people i had around me which i've been super super blessed with you know i think i've always tried to be solid to the people around me and they've been solid back so got great people around me um the team that i've been on the last three years the rocky mountain ktm team they gave me space for that time and let me kind of figure it out i was still talking to the guys but they weren't pressuring me to like figure it out because i think if they had pressured me i might have been like well fuck it then you know where in this headspace i was in i don't think i was in the right place i was like shit was like pretty dark and weird like in that time period just because i was kind of lost feeling but yeah I didn't have a lot of pressure from anyone and for me personally I usually I like to make my own decisions I'm a little bit stubborn at times I don't like being pushed so it was nice that they kind of gave me some space and let me just go through it and figure it out myself Um, but it's funny too like I was talking to my my old trainer Corey who's a legend and uh, just an incredible person and I had him because he he owns a gym, a CrossFit gym in North Carolina. And I was like, yo, send me, I'm, I'm getting bored and I'm, I'm like starting to like, I'm in my head too much. I'm like, without riding, without do, training, I was like, send me stuff. I want to work out. I want to try to like not be so skinny, right? Like I was like, I'm just bored. I'm going to go to the gym every day. And obviously I'm, I'm not a weightlifter, right? Like I'm, I'm built like a 12 year old. So like that yeah. didn't work out. But uh, he sends me all this stuff and he's like, all right, this will work. Just do this. And then when I told him, I said, all right, I'm I finally called him again. I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm riding tomorrow. And here's what, here's the deal. Like I'm not done. And he goes, I know. He's like, did you not look at the workouts that I sent you? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? They were like, all just like weights and stuff. And he's like, yeah, but none of it, it was all stuff that you did before just without like as much cardio. He's like, yeah, the cardio. I knew you were doing this. He's like, I knew this would happen. So he's like, I kind of just pulled a fast one on you and had you training for like writing strength already and I'm like that's pretty it's pretty funny and also very cool and another one of those situations like the Jimmy thing you know which yeah just nice to have good people around sometimes yeah but that speaks to you as much as it speaks to them though man you know like and I fucking I've known you a long time like you're a really good person like good people want to help good people that's one of the reasons why people say like you are the five people you surround yourself with it's like if you do like just count them right now it's just like just top of your head it's you got like jimmy you got your trainer you got colt it's like well, all right well there's three so that's three super dope motherfuckers and then you add like robbie reynard and say you know so it's like you and you just don't keep shitheads in the circle there's just i don't have anyone in my life that's a piece of shit they're fucking clip from the program like i'm lucky enough in that sense in my life where and i think that's the blessing of working for yourself um and not being like i don't have a job like no there's not one person that can tell me who i have to interview who has to work for me like who i have to deal with i'm fucking so lucky in that sense and i mean if you're a person that isn't lucky that can't choose like if you've got dickhead co-workers or a dickhead boss that makes it even more important in your in your life outside to just make sure that the crew around you are so fucking solid and then it's like you kind of everyone builds off each other you know so dude it, it speaks to you as much as it speaks to them well i appreciate you saying that but there we me and my friends talk about it all the time you know and 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 my dad like just the way he acted in front not not like all the way I was raised just the way he acted in front of me showed showed me enough you know so um, there's nothing more important than respect so I think you don't get that without giving it mm-hmm. you know what I mean and the world makes you think a lot of things are important a lot of things that are here and gone a lot of things that don't really mean anything and uh, 
at the end of the day, what boils all boils down to the people you have around you, if you can count on them, and how you treat the people that you love or say you love, you know? So I think for me, that's the biggest thing is I've been through a lot of shit. So um, I've been at those points where when you're kind of down and I've been in the points where like I'm, I'm winning stuff and I'm making good money. And then I've been in points where I'm literally making nothing and I'm just blowing through my savings just to survive and doing terrible. And I've had the same people around me through both of it, you know? So that showed me a lot. And obviously there's been people come and go throughout life because that's what happens. It's how you learn and you don't know until you know, same thing with all of it with experience. But like you said, if once you figure that out about people, then you can't keep that around because that energy is bad. And, and I rather have people around that are going to be good to me in the way that I would treat them, you know, cause same people, like one of my trainers I had for like, I mean, we worked together for shit, man, five, six years. Um, Ryan Fedoro, still really, really close friends. Like I talk to him almost daily and we haven't worked together in five, six years, mm-hmm. but I felt like we, the relationship that we built over that time, um, and the friendship that we had, I felt like it was a genuine, it's a genuine friendship. So it's not like, it's not all right, we're just around each other because it's a business. Exactly. And I've been lucky with that. You know, Robbie, Robbie Raynard and Ashley, they've been that way with me. Um, same with Colt. You know, they were, we literally called them mom and dad because me and Colt were like just kids living in their house and they're just taking care of us, right? And we're just idiots. So um, people like that, man, mother trainer, Corey, um, even right now working with Burner, like just a solid dude, man. I just, I really enjoy hanging out with him and his family. So um, Jimmy, like, dude, it, the list goes on. I have a lot of good people. And even just like at this point in my career, my parents, they'll drive like 12 hours to the races. They'll yeah. just get in the car and drive because, and my dad's like, dude, at this point, like, I'm never going to be mad at you. You know what I mean? He's like, I like seeing you have fun. And I like the way it is now where I don't have to, push I don't have to tell you anything you're you're a man you yeah. handle your own stuff how you want to handle it I just like being there and I'm like well it means a lot to me too having my family around because I know like you said everything is finite man like this thing doesn't last forever so instead of like when I was younger being all stressed out not wanting a lot of people around and whatever whatever because I'm like freaking out about not winning or how whatever how to do it this point I'm like, man, I want to just enjoy this shit and have these memories with my family and my friends and not be so uptight because nothing comes, nothing good comes of that. Nothing good comes of being stressed out. It just wears your body down, your mind down. It makes you unhappy. And you know, it's, it's, it's too cool of a life that I've been blessed to live to do that. So it's nice having these people around, man. Our fed dude, he came to the race this weekend just to help me out. You know, I, I'm not paying him. You know, he's not my trainer right now, but we're good friends. And he just came to help me out because it's what you do for friends. So, uh, yeah, man, I've been very, very fortunate with uh, good people around me because, man, life would be tough without that, you know? Yeah. Nah, dude. Um, yeah, I feel you on that. When when you had that head injury, man, how much of the dep- like, because it sounds like you're in like a depression, man. And when you hit your head bad, like that shit fucking causes depression. Like, was that in the back of your mind at all that you were like, dude, I hit my head bad. Like it, this changed me. And when you said like, you just wo- woke up one morning and felt better. Cause like I had a, I had a crash. Fuck. I wonder when it would have been. It would have been like end of June and it was literally a tiny crash and I popped my AC joint I just my front I was trying to stand into a turn like really far and then the front just washed and uh shout out Air Fox and <laughs> and uh and then yeah I just like front wash and I just went whack little head slap on the ground like that whiplash kind of deal AC joint I felt like fucking shit dude like my head was like I was not good for probably a week I want to say and I knew it like I could feel that it was different and I wasn't out it wasn't a massive head injury it wasn't <sighs> like a big deal and you having like a big knock that shit can really change your brain for a period of time yeah and I think with that stuff it's 
it's all still like taboo and you people don't want to talk about it whatever but people don't huh dude honestly that one that one was tough but the time period that was the toughest for me with that stuff was end of 2017 throughout 2018 I had a crash at Monster Cup I got knocked out for a decent amount of time came back maybe only six weeks later um, my chain snapped in a rhythm section oh. out at the farm and I, I went head I went like it was like a three on on off three and I, on the last off it snapped and I went head first into the next jump and that one was pretty gnarly and then obviously I missed a couple rounds supercross when I came back at like the second or third race I'd got a little squirrely going up to a triple at first slap of the heat race I backed out got landed on and then I spiral fractured my humerus uh, fractured something in my back and when I did it it like I whiskeyed because it just like broke yeah. the top of my arm uh, bone in half so I whiskeyed and went straight into the wall like at the stadium so I was all kinds of messed up there and, and those those ones like like my life imploded for a bit after that because I was like dude super depressed I was being just an asshole to everybody. Mm. I was going into that. I'd finally, I won a couple races that summer leading into this. So I finally felt like, okay, I weathered the storm. I'm back. I'm back, baby. Let's do this. Now it's mm. go time. And uh, then all this stuff starts happening. And I'm like, finally supposed to, you know, not making millions of dollars, but I was finally supposed to be able to make some decent money. And obviously I didn't race much. So everything got clipped by quite a bit from injury clauses and all that. So um, I just moved down to Florida, kind of down there by myself. Uh, all my friends weren't there. So that was a rough period, man. But yeah, no, I straight up, man, I haven't talked about it a lot, but I know I'm pretty happy generally. I got a pretty optimistic and good attitude for the most part. Um, but yeah, dude, I've, I've had issues with that for sure. Depression, anxiety, all that big time. And why do you think people don't want to talk about it? Because this is like, you want to talk about the NFL and shit. And it's like, you know, that's a big kind of, um, it's a big topic. And I guess like I've done quite a bit of reading into it and, uh, looking into the science behind it. And I mean, there's definitely a case to make for just like the repetitive, uh, like every snap, you know, like you're, you're getting those, those, uh, knocks. But I mean, those guys on the on the football field, they're not going out for like minutes, dude. I mean, I was at Coolum one day. Uh, we got like this pretty gnarly track here, um, and it's actually where Jet and Hunter learned to ride, basically. Um, and Andrew McFarlane crashed there one day, and he was out for like seven minutes, dude. Like it was, he just hit the back mm. of a fucking lapper. It was like a seven minute deal. And then, you know, a friend of mine, Luke George, who he had, he did a couple races for PC. He grew up with Chad. Um, he was like Chad's little protege. He went over, did some race of PC, was killing it, come back to Australia, did the last round. Fucking huge one, dude. Out for minutes again. And it just like changed his life, you know. And I don't know, man. Like I, I personally think like our sport is probably one of the gnarliest sports on the planet for head injuries. I just don't. I mean, fuck, I don't know, throw some suggestions at me, but like, Jesus, dude, I don't know that there's a sport where guys like you can be, ha like, suffer these crazy bad head injuries, and then, on the flip side of it, it's like, no one really wants to talk about it. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, too, I mean, I think with all of this stuff, not talking about it and pretending like it just doesn't exist, is just... Not only ignorant, it's not going to help anything. Yeah. You know, like, I think people are scared to talk about these kind of things, especially athletes, because you don't want to feel or look or like come across as being weak. You yeah. Know? Yeah, you're making excuses or, or you're, you have weakness. But guess what? Human beings have weakness, man. It is what it is. I've had a shit ton of head injuries. I've had a lot of body injuries. Just is what it is. Honestly, a lot of us have. I've just done a lot of mine at races in front of people where mm. you could see it. So, um, I think for me, like understanding more throughout life and being able to just be confident and comfortable with myself, I don't care. It's fine. Like, yes, I was super depressed. <laughs> I got anxiety issues big time. Like, but I don't know, dude, like 
like you get PTSD from this kind of thing, you know, like, yeah, you know, it's like, it's big injuries and, and anything traumatic throughout life, which we all have dealt with trauma, those things, it changes you a little bit. It always does. You know, it's always kind of there from then on. And I think with the head injuries, yes, sports like football, they have a lot of the smaller, more repetitive hits to the head. But I think back and man, we didn't know any better, but dude, I remember not knowing what it was, but I know I got concussions when I was a kid, I'm five years old, you know? And if you're kind of doing that consistently throughout your whole entire life, like all of us are, it's not just me, it's all of us. You Even know, ev- some people like get lucky day and they riders. don't. Yeah, everyday riders, dude. People, it happens to everyone. It's just part of it. But yeah, obviously, I mean, come on, dude. The guys who, I mean, DeCoster's still at the races every weekend and he's like the biggest triple OG of the sport. There's not been that much time of this thing being a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, the sport hasn't been around for a hundred plus years. So yeah, who knows what the real effects are and the speeds we're going these days, man, these 450s are exactly unreal fast. The speeds were going, like I think that was my issue at Glendale at that Supercross. That start straight was the length of the stadium. Yeah. And we were going like 70 miles an hour, dude, when we hit the corner. Yeah. So yeah, if I hit the ground and I don't know what's coming and my hands are behind my back, of course, straight to my face, yes, I'm gonna be knocked out. Doesn't matter what happens or what protective gear I'm wearing. It's just, dude, we're going fast. So are you I do like think is- too, when you ride a when you ride a two stroke, like a one twenty five. The crashes weren't as big back then, but I rode one in the last few years. You're not going very fast. So like you're going to hit the ground going like way slower. So you can take that a little bit better than a 450 throwing you off somewhere. Well, the thing too, the, I, I completely agree, man. Like I just got a 125 again and uh, I spend, it's in pieces right now because we're doing a, we're going fucking ham on the build. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. Would you do a voiceover? for like a build video we yeah, need to dude, use whatever. this we we need to use this silk i got hey you got yeah, the mic i'll do it i'll plug in i'll plug in the newman 103 we can make it work oh fuck yeah well, yeah all right we got I, I wanted to hit you up about that but that shit just reminded me <laughs> uh, but yeah like the the 125 thing it's like a you're not going as fast and b when you swap or get thrown off that thing, it's like getting thrown off by a donkey as opposed to a fucking PBR bull. You know, like the the weight's not the same. Like there's there's like the the levels of depth that go uh, into these factors with crashes on 450s is actually a lot deeper than just the speed. Like the the way that the thing can can bark the like there's the other 450s that are around you like there's a lot that that goes into it man and it's it it is something to look at and for you to say like that's right dude i'm i mean i used to love going to to glendale a because the fucking parties were insane in phoenix like scottsdale arizona the shit but i used to love that fucking star trek you wouldn't know but i used to love that star trek like that's fucking cool as to see those bikes go into that stadium that way but dude that shit comes with some serious consequences if it goes bad for one of you guys i mean but again yes it went bad for me there so i was not super pumped on it but like i said good and bad so like having a triple within a couple rhythms off the start sketchy too sometimes but what are you gonna do not build triples like supercross racing man like Supercross is just a dangerous game that we play and it is what it is. Like you gotta pay to play. And you know, whoever said that, genius, because you yeah. can get nothing for free in life. The um, the high that you get from racing and doing cool stuff on a motorcycle can't just be that. There's gotta mm-hmm. be some something to balance that out with, you know? Like there's it's gotta be risky, it's gotta be tough because otherwise it wouldn't be so cool. It wouldn't be so rewarding when you do well. It wouldn't be so awesome when you do a a quad on a supercross track, you know? Like, mm. if it was just kind of normal, then it'd be whatever. Like, it's got to be a bit dangerous and a bit dicey for it to feel as awesome. So, yeah, it sucks when you're on the other end of that. But at the same time, I think we've all been on the good side of it probably more often than the bad. So, is what it is. We'll take it. 
dude you're so right about that i i i got friends like with the i got like a jiu-jitsu friends that i train with every day and then i got my motocross friends that i ride with on the weekends and my jiu-jitsu friends i'm coming into training every day i'm like ah man my shoulders are kind of fucked up like i actually need to like back it off that i got this thing with my back i crash on the weekend and they're just like dude why the fuck do you do this like this is this is like doesn't seem good for you and then it's like well man i drove 3,700 miles with my friends to race on a track that I was so unprepared for and just got fucking beat up for three days. I was scared of the track. It was no joke. And then beat to shit, partied our ass off at, at night, hung over as fuck, stopping every five minutes on the way home so that Ronan can throw up out the car. It's like you get back from a trip like that and it's exactly what you said. Like, because that shit was so gnarly, it was so fucking hard to do and we went there we did the motos and then we drove our sorry asses home but the reward in that is fucking insane if i went and did a local club day 20 minutes down the road cool not the same not the same man not the same at all it's got man there's got to be consequences for things to be so Mm. dope like come on come on it's like anything man you you're not gonna hey you're not gonna meet the right person if you don't put yourself out there you know you're not gonna get that job if you don't go to the interview like fortune favors the bold you feel me like you gotta get out here and roll the dice a little bit if you want to make a little money you feel me nah for sure so with that though like is there shit that you think that supercross could do to make it safer for you guys like right now without fucking with the program too much you're a vet you've seen some shit i mean there's always yeah there's always things they can do like even just little stuff like after i had that issue on the triple back in 2018 uh, the very next weekend somebody else got landed on on a triple so then they started taking the tough blocks off of the outside Mm. of the triple so that if you doubled you could have an escape route yeah you know because i was there that night when trey when morris and trey yeah uh, morris landed on trey because trey got a a block cover and ended up rolling the triple and like dude that was that was not only was it traumatic to see like i know trey so seeing that it was like man it was rough and obviously mo's a good dude too so seeing that happen it's just like man could this have been avoided maybe like i don't know but that when they did that i did see like people using that as like a way to get off the track without getting landed on which at the end of the day like we're all so competitive and we're all like adrenaline and testosterone and man shit going on where you want to go out there and do your gladiator thing and and you want to win and you stop thinking about the consequences and what can go wrong but at the same time i don't think any of us really we all feel that like danger we don't want to die for no reason man like stuff can go super wrong in those situations you know so live to fight another day mean a lot more than doing something like that they can be avoided you know yeah, because I mean that—that's definitely. But I don't know, those... dude. It's—it's it's a complex thing. Like, it's tough. Like, someone yeah. like Trey. Speaking of Trey, he tried to to get in there and and try to help make decisions, but it's just tough, man. There's there's a chain of command that things have to go through. Um, sometimes things cost money. Our sport's small, and we all feel like it's not because we live in this world and this is our bubble. But it's small, dude. Like, people don't know who any of us are in the real world. You know, like <laughs> we're just normal people, dude. We, if they figure it out and we explain it to them, then they get it sometimes, but we're not NBA players. You know, we don't have that kind of backing and that kind of funding to do whatever needs done. So it does make it more difficult too. But at the same time, there are simple things like the tough block thing, or just having someone to talk to about maybe an obstacle that might be a little bit sketchy that needs worked on. Yeah. Just simple stuff like that, I think, is the most important because the sport hasn't changed much in the last 20, 30 years. Like, really? At least since, like, turn of the century, things have been pretty similar since then. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a pretty, for what it is, it's a well oiled machine, you yeah. know? And people like to give a lot of stuff to, you know, Feld or MX Sports, but dude, without those guys, we have no livelihood. And yeah. those guys have. You know, it's a lot of work putting this stuff on, you know, it's not easy. So, um, 
it's not always there's not always someone you can blame you know like sometimes yeah, things yeah. just over time course correct themselves and get better over time because that's what happens throughout anything in life is trial and error you don't know until you know so yes it would have been nice if that tough block wasn't on that triple when i rolled it but i mean that hadn't been an issue really in a while so yeah how are you gonna know something happens and then you being reactionary is still better than not doing anything so uh is there like a rider rep every year like is there someone that like let's say you've got an issue like the triple thing like you get on the you do the first practice and you get out there and you go ah oh, dude i could actually see me missing this triple like at any point something this isn't an easy triple to make and then they've got tough blocks on there is there someone that you can ride over to and be like hey dude i definitely think that like this should get changed and then is there anything that's is there any process in place for you as a rider in those practices to go then and say this is something we should look at because hey supercross you're there for a long ass time it, it ain't like it ain't like there isn't time in between the first time your wheels touch the track and the first gate drop of the night you're there all fucking day yeah i think i don't know if there's like a certain i guess plan in place for things like that but i mean there are people that we can talk to especially the guys like myself or a lot of the guys in the 450 class that have been around for a long time you start to you know know people and things like that so you can have conversations with them uh a lot of times you'll see guys like talk to you know the the track builders or something like that because those guys are there all day and they're mm. they've all been in this a very long time as well and they're open to feedback too they're not getting their feelings hurt if you're like dude that thing is the way that developed is a bit sketchy like maybe it just needs fixed like it's it's not got to be something is a problem it's just sometimes things develop weird and mm. causes you know something to start reaching up and biting you that you weren't you know really prepared for so i think you know talk to track builders and stuff that's what i mean that's really the only thing we can do at this point you know there's not like a like a rider rep or a safety representative of any kind you know we just know enough people around and talk to whoever you can get a hold of and usually things get worked out pretty well i i think though for the sport to move forward in a positive direction i'd see the benefit in there being an official process that you can go through as a rider that you know it's like after each practice session there's like a person you can go to and then that concern is addressed or you know like at least taken into consideration if multiple people have that same concern and they go there i mean i don't know i think there should be more of a formal process like hey if there's something sketchy if there's something with me it's it's not to accuse anyone of doing a shit job you know the track you are right dude like those track builders like they're fucking g's man they're there every single weekend year on year on year and there's never really that many issues but the times where you do hear about like Villo's crash that was a problem like that that jump was a problem the the whole time i mean even uh, maybe some of the dragon backs that have kind of been in in the last couple of years there's you know where coop crash like that was a problem like i know certain people have had issues with things on the track and then they've led to really gnarly injuries and the thing is is like if you're felled or uh, MX Sports. I mean, I don't think it happens as much in outdoors. I mean, I might be wrong on that, but I feel like Supercross is a little bit more like kind of on a razor's edge. But it's like if you're MX Sports, dude, like, uh, sorry, Feld, you don't want Villapoto going over the fucking bars and destroying his leg. You don't want Cooper Webb crashing out of a Supercross championship. Like, that shit changed that championship, like, straight up. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's always kind of been an issue too is keeping all the main guys healthy but just part of it but yeah i think i agree with you on that outdoors it's not as the margin for error in supercross is razor thin yeah like it's so small if you have a the slightest lapse in concentration whatsoever you can end up on your head quick where with outdoors you can kind of be more creative and find places to kind of go around rest shit. a bit or yeah. recharge for a sec you can miss bumps you can do supercross there's not really any new way to do anything everyone kind of does it all the same you kind of you better get a good start and then you better just sprint your ass off for 20 minutes and 
you know, I hope it all goes good because there's not really anything super creative you can do in Supercross. So the margin for error is smaller because you're all trying to go so fast doing the same thing. Yeah. At least from my experience, that's what what I feel. Yeah. So, so that, that makes it harder than really any of the other stuff. Yeah. So one thing also, while we're on the suggestions for 2022 Supercross, uh, talked about it with Colt Nichols. He's on board. Walkouts. I know you're feeling Are we, that we shit. we talking about the walk-in fits, dude? Yep. Yeah, dude. I'm in. I gotta make some money though, bro. Like I, I gotta boost the closet back up. You know what I mean? It's been a minute. So. Yeah. If I get a ride, I gotta get a ride, dude. I don't have a job yet for next year. So if I get a ride for next year, then I'm in. I'm in either way. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, we swagging out regardless. So me and Colt will do it. So, but it the problem is, is our our photog man Frace ain't ain't been coming to the races with me. So uh, I'll hey gotta find I will to take the picks. I will put up the money. Whatever it costs to get a photographer to get those pit those pictures taken, I will put up the money. I'll also put up the money for a backdrop. I'll put on Feld's fucking logo. Like I'll talk to Prater. I could. I'll do it in the parking lot. Whatever. Like where you enter to get into the fucking track. I'll put up the money. Amazing. I'll take care of it. Who else? You. You're in. Colt's in. Jet will be in. Hunter will be in. There's mm. a. Let's be. Hey, Jalik. Mm. That motherfucker's fly. He'll be in. The young Dino the younger can wear kids, a kilt. Dino can wear kids. a kilt. Dino, he'll give it his best effort. With a lot of the younger kids are a lot more open to like just doing cool stuff. So a lot of the two fifty kids, you know, they they'd be into it. So a couple of us, a couple of us old heads, you know what I mean? Still, yeah. still getting the game. But I don't know, man. It's just what we do, anyways, man. Like me, Cole, Brad, we just design stuff and make stuff all the time anyway so it's just kind of like part of what we do on a daily basis so nah I'm feeling it and uh AP as well I forgot about AP that motherfucker would rock a mean cowboy hat could you imagine him I walking call in what AP does is, is fly or swag now but I would say that <laughs> AP will be entertaining for sure hey there's a bunch of red states that disagree with that statement Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all about it. Because I think that, you know, so like perfect example, dude. So one of my coaches in jiu-jitsu is, he's my age, black belt, fly as fuck, never watched a game of NBA in his life, never watched a game of NFL in his life. If you go to his house right now, turn on his YouTube, it's just straight NBA walkouts. It's like the best dressed in the NFL. Like there's a, there's a vibe that that shit creates man and i feel like that shit lifts up the sport and d- you're a good looking motherfucker colt is a good looking motherfucker if i'm a if i'm a brand i am not mad at doing some kind of partnership with uh with justin bogle or colt nichols and it's like let's fuck off the team shirts and the monster hats for like five minutes and if you're a monster dude like if you're ap then you go to monster you go hey a1's coming up we're doing this walk we're doing this walk out deal i need some i need like a fucking like a iced out monster chain or i need like a iced out monster belt you know that's this is the shit where it's like let's fucking get creative that shit's dope for monster like you think monster doesn't want to run uh ap with like a dope photo with his cowboy hat and like a an iced out monster chain and and i mean then there's probably people in the comment section fucking have out it boys where they're like oh what's this shit it's not about fucking winning it's like okay i get it i get it i get it we got a 20 minute main event we're at the fucking track for 14 hours can for five of these minutes be fucking fun five can we just have five minutes where we get to like look cool flex a bit on the gram give myself a bit of a vibe stoke out the fans like do we really have to be like all winning all the time i'm there for 14 hours i think for it's important too for that stuff like people that are fans of me like they're they love that shit dude like they're cool with it because they're like us but if you're i mean you know don't be something you're not like we're just being us but I think if people don't like it, then I mean, <laughs> whatever, bro. Like, I'm not that worried about it. Like, my life rolls on, and so does theirs, and it's all good. Um, if they want to hate on the clothes or the shoes or the pants or whatever, if my pants are too tight, then hey, man, you ain't got to wear them. So, 
you know, I don't know. I'm just, I ain't the type that's gonna comment on some stuff that I don't like, so it doesn't really affect me because I feel like if you're doing that, you're probably just unhappy, and if you're unhappy, then honestly, I feel you. So, you know, yeah. life's tough, man. You gotta find a way to get that energy out. Maybe we need, we all need a hobby, you know what I mean? Every human being needs three things. Want to make money, want to keep you in shape, want to keep your mind right, you know? So everybody needs that. Hey, if you don't have that sometimes, you know, you can take that anger out on people that don't deserve it. So, yeah, preach. So 2022 Sufi season, <laughs> we come and correct. I'll put up the fucking yeah, cash. Right? I'll make sure there's a photographer. I'll make sure there's a videographer and we'll get this shit done. You guys post those fucking photos. And I, I feel like it's one of those things where if it's like something that we all commit to for, and again, even if it's in the parking lot, this shit doesn't have to be official. This doesn't have to be sanctioned. We can do it in the fucking parking lot on the way in. But like this, I feel like it can gain it's actually some more. Momentum. It's more fire if it's not sanctioned. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's more fire if it's more like bootleg. Like the way we were doing it, bro, like every round in 2019 we did it. Yeah. It was literally just me, me, Colt, and Frace showed up to the races together and we and Brad would walk in first stand there take our photos as we walk by acting like we didn't see him it's like we don't care everyone's looking at us like we're idiots and we're like it doesn't matter like I'm I'm not worried about that you know what I mean I think it's dope like we thought of that idea like the Thursday before a1 and me and Colt were talking about it at the house and Brad's sitting there we're like yo we should do this this would actually be pretty dope if we like I don't know it'd be like because who do we look up to you know what I mean like my favorite NBA players Russell Westbrook like obviously because Oklahoma City Thunder for a decade but at the same time he's also the coolest with like the illest attitude so you know that kind of stuff is dope to me and so we were like all right let's just give it a shot see what happens who cares people are gonna hate on it don't matter but that's like it's what you sort of said at the start though you know like that's the shit that that's a vibe for you and and that's the stuff that can start to generate that momentum for yourself on a day and it's like look good feel good like there's all because essentially it's like if that's what you're feeling right if you're feeling that shit and you you're like man this this is dope for me to go and do that so for you to have that feeling and then not do it you've actively had to suppress something that shit takes energy that shit kills on your soul slowly over time for sure and like you just said dude literally like the way I function like I was talking earlier excitement you know that kind of thing that gets me excited new stuff like all of that like gets me more in the zone so when I get dressed in the morning on race day like at a supercross and I'm feeling like I'm looking good and I'm excited about something I just picked up or you know whatever I got a new pair of shoes or I finally got these that I've been trying to get for however long mm. you know I'm all amped up I'm excited and you got that a little extra boost in the morning. It's like, I don't even need the fourth shot of espresso. You know what I'm saying? Maybe only three today because I'm feeling good already, baby, let's go. So <laughs> when it's like that, I mean, I don't know, dude, like shit makes me happy. And if it makes you happy, as long as you ain't hurt nobody else, why not? Yeah, no, nah, I'm with you, dude. Hey, so the one thing when when I did the podcast with Colt, we've already been, how long have we been going for? We've been, we're fucking slamming through this. Oh, hour 15? Oh, yeah, sweet. We good then. I thought we were going to be going a bit longer. Um, when I, when Everyone I was making fun of me before I came over here because they said there's no way you're going to be able to talk for that long, but they're all being smart asses because I never shut up. So, you know, <laughs> hey, good, I'm good, You want to talk? You want to you wanna marathon talk, bro? I got you. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. Uh, <laughs> so, the, the one thing that I didn't talk to Colt about that I kind of wanted to was heritage. You ain't all white you're from oklahoma and you got some of that native american blood in there what is i mean not where does that sit in like where you are now like that development of you like there's a heritage there that comes from this place that like that's not a common thing in moto that's not a a storyline that that we talk about that's not something that we're like used to kind of diving into like how does that fit into your storyline I know it is a unique thing and it's also speaking of cult it's very cool that the only two like native american pro supercross racers have both won supercross championships like that's pretty that's pretty cool because you know we we grew up together best friends since we were five years old so 
always being around each other like it was normal to us you know and a lot of people back home you know that's yeah where people went when they got forced from their homes was a lot of them went to Oklahoma so that's where I'm Seminole so originally if you go back that'd be Florida and then Colt is Cherokee so different tribes but I mean there's there's a lot of different tribes but definitely back home it's a lot different too like like I get my car tags from like the uh from like the uh the Seminole tribe like I don't get them through like the normal DMV really and I have like a, a card like a I've got like a Seminole Nation card and you know do stuff through there and throughout school there's like programs for kids if you need it stuff like that but be growing up with that it's like my dad is a white person like my dad's white like super white so it looked like I was adopted when I was a kid right but my mom is obviously not so uh I got a funny mix of the two but um me and Colt being best friends too is like hilarious because it's like almost like it was supposed to be we're both these Indian kids racing dirt bikes our birthdays are a day apart you know we kind of look similar he won't agree with you on that because he tells everyone that he's the best looking out of anyone in the crew which we'll give it to him you know he can have that and uh, we all say it boils down to the fact that he's got the confidence for the dangly earring and we don't so we'll give him that one man but but yeah man I I know I remember meeting my my great grandma when I was like super young and uh, like she spoke like the language and everything like didn't speak like super wow. great English like which is crazy man like that stuff's crazy it's crazy that I even remember that but it was like because it ain't a that long ago is like a child nah the crazy thing is is like I mean a couple generations removed from like it being like that doesn't it seems like it should have been like so long ago but it really wasn't so and that's a lot of the you know Race is always such a hot topic with everybody, but when it's your lineage and like the things that have happened to like your culture and people, it's like you kind of understand from trying to understand what other people are going through or dealing with or how they feel about stuff. Because, dude, some gnarly stuff's happened to some people. So it's like, I do think too though that like just through your DNA and like just over time, like you have certain things from being, you know, parts of certain cultures and and whatever so um i don't know man i'm super i'm grateful for it because it's a you know my my grandparents and people like that it's like a different way of looking at life and stuff you know yeah yeah it's always been very cool to see and it's nice to have that as like a part of me as well like obviously i'm just I, i grew up in oklahoma but i raced dirt bikes and make music my whole life so it's not like i'm going to powwows like i did go to a few when i was a kid but i don't remember them really none of that so it's like not like I'm like you know fully immersed in the culture but um, the older I get the more I want to know about it too the more I want to yeah. learn about where 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 all this stuff came from for like me and my uh, family and stuff you know so I don't know it's cool it's interesting because it's not like a normal thing in like our world for sure but like I said for like me and Colt it's like I don't know just just what we were around growing up so it seems normal yeah dude i fucking the race thing is a hard one um but i look at like i look at jaleek swole and i'm just like fuck yes dope black kid racing motocross and i look at you and Colt, i'm like that's some fucking dope ass indian boys that are racing this shit and why is that important why does that matter and it's like fundamentally race doesn't matter right in terms of what a person is like the color of their skin fundamentally doesn't matter at all but where race does matter is the inclusion of things and the way that when you're a kid and you grow up and you see like i don't think and 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 for jaleek like it makes no sense for him to think too much about this you know like it makes sense for me to think about it's kind of my job but it's like dude being a young black kid in this sport makes other young black kids want to do this sport and it's not that it's other black kids that we want it's just like we want everybody you want every kid 
and it's like when you're a when you're a, a young Indian kid, the a Native American kid that's killing it in the sport. It's like I fucking want more of those people in the sport. And then you bring that angle and you bring those storylines and you bring mm. that flavor and it just adds to this like depth, you know? It's like it's like this recipe for in cooking, you know, like you don't just want to eat fucking white rice. Like, you need some soy sauce, you need some spices, you need some flavor. Like, that shit is fucking cool. You start to add all these different ingredients and all these different cultures into the mix and these different perspectives and these different backgrounds. And there's some fucking energy that, that you and Colt can tap into. You know, like, you're a, if you're a fucking a Cherokee Indian, bro, like... That's some gangster shit that you've got. Like, only a couple generations. Spirit, baby. For real, man. And it's like... But that's a fucking dope storyline. That's a dope storyline for um, uh, for me as a fan to buy into. And, like, I can't wait to have Jalik on this podcast, dude. Like, that motherfucker's been through some shit. And it's like, look at him. He won a fucking national this year. When, like, there's no reason that kid should have ever won a national. And it's like, there's other black kids out there that could look at Jalik Swole and just be like, fuck, I could fully do that, man. And then you start to, you see, like, uh, you're like, one of the fastest dude ever to ride a dirt bike, James Stewart. Black kid. Malcolm Stewart. Motherfuckers as good as it gets. Black kid. Jalik Swole. Black kid. You start to think, like, other black kids are like, hey, some of the best dudes that have ever done this sport have been black kids just like me. Maybe I can hustle and make this shit work. And then there's other Indian kids out there that look at what you guys have done and you're like, damn, man, like, that's two, the two Native American kids that were ever in this championship both won championships. Maybe there's something to this shit. Maybe I could be that guy, you know? So it's like, race doesn't matter, but race does matter. <laughs> it's like that with, with anything that you talk about. Like, it's always such a touchy subject, but... Like, it doesn't matter, like you said, fundamentally it's who you are as a person, but it matters because how could it not? Of yeah. course it matters, you know? Everyone goes through different things. Like, people's stories are different. People's obstacles that they've had to deal with, hardships they've had to endure, it's all different for everybody. So, of course it matters, man. But, yeah, like even, like you're saying, man, like just having different cultures and different types of people just in general, being a part of something, man, all, all it does is, you know, maybe there are some closed minded people that don't really that definitely are. get it. So maybe, maybe the inclusion of other people being around kind of gives them perspective and opens their eyes a little bit yeah. over time to understand like, all right, look, man, we all love the same thing. We can't be that much different, you know? Yeah. So, uh, it, it yeah, man, of course it matters. Of course it does. But and it would be, me and Cole talk about it all the time, man. It's, it'd be really, really cool to be able to do that, to like inspire kids like us from where we're from, which is like super small town places in Oklahoma where, you know, it, it's not super normal to have like big dreams and want to go places and be somebody and do something, you know? Like, it's just not that, it, that, the, that you couldn't, it's just that maybe you don't even know it's possible. Yeah, exactly. So for us, we always look at it like, man, it'd be so cool to be able to you know go back or even just by living inspire kids to understand like yo you could be somebody like how yeah. crazy is that you could be somebody i was just a kid that grew up there too my dad wasn't a racer my mom wasn't an athlete my parents weren't rich i was just a kid like y'all and i lived my dream so i think just that inspiration is more important than anything you don't need to give people the guidebook on how to do it you just gotta yeah let them know that they can do it like it's a yeah. thing you can do and then you figure it out yourself yeah dude 100 percent, man and it's like j cole song man it's like no role role models you know like if you don't have those ro role models around you because that's the shit like that can move the needle you know like you can be the the guy that yeah like looks up to a jaleek swole and have you have you ever been to the Stewart compound I have not, no. Oh, dude. So, you drive in to, like, the road to go into the Stewart compound, and you look around, you're like, wait, what? Like, this is where they came from? Like, there ain't fucking dirt bikes here, dude. 
Like, and and then you start listening to rap, like really listening to rap, and you want to hear about like Dade County, Florida, like there ain't a, that ain't a place where a fucking dirt bike kid can come from, let alone the fastest dude to ever do it. It is crazy, man, and it's it was crazy to me that. I don't know, like, I think the era that James come up in, like, I know they dealt with, like, some hardcore racism. Like, I've seen that shit firsthand. So, if anyone, and, like, I've, made, I've mentioned it, like, once or twice on the podcast, and then I had people come back at me with comments about, like, you know, blah, blah, typical bullshit. I'm like, hey, I fucking saw it. I was literally right there. I was fucking there. I know exactly what went down. But it's like, you drive to that place, man, you drive through that town, and, and it's like... I wish so bad that that was more a part of the story was just like a real genuine appreciation for like just how fucking far that family came dude it is honestly miraculous and I have nothing but the utmost respect for the way that those that family went about their life and they made their dreams come true in that sense and it's like dude in that story is the most like inspirational shit ever and it was like this part of this that everyone just kind of like almost swept under the rug or didn't want to acknowledge and it was i don't know it, it was almost like faded out of the fucking history books in a way you know but it's like there is power in that story and it's the same like i know the shit that jaleek's been through and it's like you know you guys coming from you know small town oklahoma like you've only got to go to um indian reservations like even in like parlor and shit to know that it ain't common to be doing what you're doing and and when you're a when you're an uncommon person or you come from an uncommon situation and you've reached the heights that all you guys have reached it's like that shit is worth fucking celebrating and putting aside any bullshit to be like damn dude like they fucking did it it's hard enough for people with like every advantage to do it for sure and i think like even the the james saying it's like just proof that like where there's a will there's a way when you're meant to be great like you can figure it out like it'll you'll make a way to do it and that's so inspiring and I think that era that they that like James and Ricky and all these guys were in they were just a lot more secretive about everything not just yeah maybe not even for a reason I think it's just the way that this yeah. whole sport and the culture around it was just a lot more secretive where these days like especially the young kids like I keep talking like do they grew up on TikTok and Instagram like they're not hiding anything they have yeah. no shame whatsoever like they're not they're not embarrassed by any of it like so i think they'll be more open but as far as like the right now i don't know man i think those stories and the the inspiration you get from it like man everyone in the world tuned in to watch the last dance for a reason because that yeah. stuff was inspiring to see what greatness is like and to see maybe you can like just be close enough to watch what greatness is because not a lot of people get to even see it yeah. so that the story is what was the coolest part like michael jordan's shoe empire isn't whatever it is because the shoes are good it's because the story like what nike did in the 90s is the stories they told not the the product my judgment i don't it doesn't matter i like it but i'm saying that doesn't even matter the stories man the stories you're telling about bo jackson stories you're telling about jordan the stories you're telling about all these guys it's like that's why things are what they were because it's a story and that's when like even the NBA those dudes back in the 70s 80s weren't making like a ton of money and then it got to be like global and then more money involved and now look at what it is you know and I think a lot of it comes from understanding it's like that stuff was just genius level marketing you Mm -hmm. know but that helps the whole entire community in the sport as a whole if you take when James is racing, if you take James and Ricky and make them into superstars, if mm. you take Ken Roxon right now and Eli Tomac when they've been battling for the last ten years and make that into a, like them into like the stars of the sport throughout that time period or whoever it is next or you know whoever whatever, but like Jeremy McGrath, you know, made Supercross bigger because he was such a larger than life person in the sport. 
Yeah. And that was important, like the story of it and the how cool it was. It's like it, all that matters. I think we'd benefit more from that in this sport than any of the other wacky, crazy ideas to like try to grow it. I don't think any of that stuff matters. I completely. I don't agree. think that the sport needs much tinkering with as far as you know how everything runs what we do yeah i don't think we need to do any weirdo stuff with like weirdo points or weirdo like like mm. nascar chase stuff like that stuff is corny we, i don't it takes away from the prestige of it anyways i don't think we need that i think we just need more and not tell you got to tell them right though that's the thing because when you try to tell a, a, a story that's a, not that interesting it's annoying so yeah. it's like you know but there's a lot of people in like our sport that have been through a lot of stuff and if you tell it correctly, it could help, you yeah. know? And making people, you know, the way the marketing works, like you want people to think this stuff's cool because ultimately as human beings at the end of the day, you only like what you think is cool. Yeah, what the, the cool spectrum is different for everybody, yeah. but if you think it's cool, that's what you're into. So if you thought this stuff was cool or other people thought this stuff was just cool, then it'd be a little easier to get into it. You're yeah. not going to get people into it just from being like, yeah, dude, here it is. This is what it is. Come check it out. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, all right, cool. I don't know anything about it and I don't care because I know if I don't care about something, I, don't, I really don't care. I'm not even going to give it a thought. So, I mean, if I think it's cool, though, I'm diving head first into it and I'm knowing everything about it. So, I don't know, man. I just think and that's if that info is there, way to market it. If that info is there, like when you when something hits and you're like, oh, this shit's cool as fuck, and then you start to dive into it, if there's nothing there, that's where it stops, you know. And Formula One was like that. I was literally talking to Jacob yesterday. We we're talking about Ricardo, right? And then he's like, oh man, my chick fucking loves Ricardo. We started watching the Netflix thing. It's like, hey, DR3's always been that dope motherfucker. He's always been that guy. There just wasn't a Netflix series to tell the story. Justin Bogle has always been that fucking guy. Dean Wilson has always been that guy. AP has always been that guy. There's just not an avenue to tell the story. And all the time, dude, I always get asked, like, oh, you know, what? do you, like, write down questions? Do you... Motherfucker, I ain't arrogant enough to think that i could write questions about your life and your story you know I mean? who the fuck would i be to write that i can't write that shit down i don't know shit your story is your story i just need to be here and like let you tell your story that shit is so much better than what i could contrive up you know yeah well anything contrived isn't as good because it's thought about beforehand like if you do an interview this happened to me the other day. So I did a thing with Weege at Unadilla and crushed it. Like, cause I just shoot from the hip, dude. I have no plan going in. Yeah. I'll say some like one liners and stuff that maybe afterwards I'm like, dude, what am I thinking? But I'm not, my brain and my mouth aren't in sync all the time. One's moving faster than the other. So I'm just talking, dude, but I crushed it. And then the next, but then the SD card, Tom's SD card, something happened, it broke. We had to reshoot it and we were going to try to kind of hit the same things. And I, the first time I had no clue what I was doing. The second time kind of knew what I was doing. Wasn't as good. Yeah. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't quite as good. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with all that. Like it's got to be real and like, it's got to just happen naturally. And yeah, maybe it's not the best because maybe it wasn't that planned, but it's kind of how I live my life anyways. And you know, whatever, man, maybe that's why I'm inconsistent in life, but Hey, is what it is, man. The, uh, the, the thing too with to go back to the James thing for a sec is like it's not his responsibility to like be the black kid that's gonna change the sport and you know like be that guy because I watched the Tiger Woods thing I'm a lifelong Tiger Woods fan probably the greatest athlete of all time and you know there was like a thing whether that really came from his dad or not like uh, it probably came more from his dad from a young age, but like his dad kind of had this plan for him to be the black athlete and to be the guy that changed the sport. And I mean, Tiger obviously 
decided to take that up whether he wanted to take that up for himself and his own reasons or whether he wanted to do it um for his dad and to um or just even like it was just a conscious decision um he'll be the only person that can ever know that and it's not like for when i and it's why like it's hard to talk about that stuff because you don't want to put words in someone's mouth like i know james i've hung around james a lot and and i've never had a conversation with him about that i can't i can't speak from his angle and it's it's also not fair for anybody to say like hey you're one of the baddest motherfuckers of all time you're also black like you could be that guy and you should be that guy no one should be able to say that to him if he just wants to be another dude and be like hey man race doesn't matter then like fucking he's right but if he wants to be the guy that says like hey race doesn't matter but it does matter i'm a fucking black kid and any black kid could do this this is what we came through this is the shit that we dealt with and you can fucking do it like that's completely on him so just like i just wanted to i guess circle back to that and say like it's not his responsibility he doesn't owe anybody jaleek doesn't owe anybody you don't owe it like this ain't this ain't what that is but it's like if that's how you feel and if that's what you want to do and if there's value in that then like you can fucking do that shit too yeah and i think every person makes their own decision on that and how they feel about it you know because you ain't walked in their shoes so you don't know so i'd try my best not to even attempt to know what somebody else should or could do you know and if somebody doesn't want to deal with that because they truly believe a certain way then that's fine man that's it's all you you know for me i mean i've never been at that level that somebody like james is at so i wouldn't even know the Mm. pressures that comes with just living your life normally you know like the pressure that kid was under when he was young was probably a lot man so um yeah i mean never tell nobody else how to live their life regardless you know so like i said as long as you're not hurting nobody else or doing anything illegal why not if it makes you happy do it be that there's also some illegal shit you can do that can make you pretty happy too there's some dumb fucking laws in the world (laughs) but we don't do illegal things ever never have never will never have never will um so what if i'm ever on trial play this back (laughs) (laughs) uh so when you you said earlier that four years old saw a dirt bike that's what i'm gonna do what was that experience like and what was the situation that led to that being the choice you made well when i was super little like maybe man all the way back to being like two my dad he rode but more so just like like trail riding and he raced a couple times but not really um but rode all the time so i was around it um i watched races and i loved watching it but i didn't know they made little dirt bikes right so like one day i'm at home and i'm four years old and a truck pulls in with a pw50 in the back and i walked outside i saw it and i got i was like wait what is that turned around went inside i said mom you're not gonna believe this there's a dirt bike outside that's my size and she said yeah really well that's all you and i was blown away that they made dirt bikes my size and just amped dude just so stoked on this thing and got on it immediately Uh, i have a photo of it too like i'm in jean shorts and a tank top no helmet in the in the uh driveway and in the yard riding this thing around like just so pumped man and it's it's funny that i remember that because that was obviously i'm four years old like i don't have a lot of memories from back then but i remember that one for sure changed my life so thank god Dude, it's crazy the way that you can remember like little snippets from when you were a kid. Like I remember I remember actually crashing a PW. Well, I had a couple crashes on PW fifties when I was a kid. Uh but yeah, I remember like we used to have this uh it was like a boat ramp where we used to go down and go fishing and it was like a gravel mix with dirt parking lot and it was like near the speedway and then i remember there was it's still there to this day dude the the cairns motorcycle club like where i grew up tiny track like probably 45 second lap time so there was like this boat ramp and then these like mangroves where like legit like crocodile country you know like where we grew up and then there's like all these mangroves and then behind the mangroves there was this dirt bike track like the motorcycle club and there was this big gate and it had like cairns motocross on there 
and uh and i just remember like that was the spot we lived just around the corner from it and the dad would load up the pw50 and we'd go down there and uh that was like the first place that we really like learned how to ride a bike and same deal man i was probably like four or five years old that shit is fucking vivid in my brain yeah i mean dude i I think when something's that monumental in your life you don't forget it i think when it's like think same thing with like trauma big trauma you don't forget that either but also like good stuff that was big like the first time i realized they made little dirt bikes like dude come on i was so lit i was so amped up couldn't even couldn't believe it so uh yeah man i don't have a lot of memories from back then but i damn sure remember that one because it changed the course of what i'd be doing for the next however long i'm alive however many years that is who knows and so where did it go from there like how did you get into racing when did you know you were good were you always the most stylish motherfucker so my, on the planet I've always tried no I'm saying uh, <laughs> when I my first race my first race was actually we didn't know it but it was a, a Loretta Lens area qualifier and I was on my PW and I we had no clue went and got oh you last, didn't know it was a qualifier and no, no. It was just the track was close. Uh, Guy Cooper used to have Cooperland, and he had this other track called the Sugar Bowl. And this area qualifier was at the Sugar Bowl. And it was 15, 20 minutes from my house. So there was a race there, so we went. Didn't know it was a qualifier, but whatever. Uh, left there. was like, all right, I, I liked that. But um, I was, you know, sleeping between motos. I'm like four or five years old, whatever, I'm a little kid no clue what's going on just like having fun and uh yeah from there just started racing here and there and then got a a ktm and then got a cobra and then by the time i was like six my dad was like all right well shit said we weren't gonna go very far to race we weren't gonna do all that but i mean we kind of have to now because i was pretty good by then and i remember I was like six or seven or now I would have been six as four to six class. Like I, I won my regional, I won a moto at a national. And from then it was like, all right, well, we're going to have to pretty much dive into this thing because I can't go five seconds without thinking about it. And Mm. my dad's like, well, damn it. He's pretty good at it. So I guess we'll give it a shot and see what happens. So from there, man, it was, it's funny. Like I felt like I was always real close to it, but I never really was winning you know, at nationals and stuff and didn't really get like a full team green ride till I was like 14. And I'd been, like I said, I was six years old. I think I'd won a national moto. So just took a long time to do it. Um, a big part of it for me too, was like Colt same way. He didn't go all the way through, but did I, I went to school. I graduated from high school. Like it was hard to understand growing up that like, why is everyone like better than me you know I feel mm. like I'm, I should be better but then I'm like ah it's like I'm it's like I'm working a job and then riding on the weekends like I'm I'm at mm. school all day come home I'm doing whatever dumb stuff kids are doing and then I'm racing every weekend but like I'm not riding or doing anything remotely productive for like my career during the week even all the way through high school like I didn't really have time like I took extra classes and then you know I was trying to talk to girls and stuff like I didn't have time to be doing stuff like I would hit the gym and do all that and I'd ride when I could but until I graduated high school I didn't really start winning but as soon as I graduated high school it was 2010 and then I pretty much started I won everything from there out in amateurs which in hindsight I was like okay well I started riding and doing stuff like everyone else was but I wouldn't change that because I mean dude I I got to go to school and went through high school, got the experience, you know, got to do all that. So it wasn't a bad thing. And then, Hey, still all worked out, you know, what, what do kids miss if they do the dirt bike thing and get homeschooled? Like as a, as a kid that went all the way through, graduated from high school, like when you, cause I mean, fuck, you can be around some kids and like, it's not a knock, like they're just socially retarded essentially. Like, I know you can't really say that word anymore, but it's just like in a social sense, like they're just not fucking, they're just not people that have adequate skills and it's i mean yeah i don't know like what do you see in some people that there's like there's like there's a gap in your development essentially yeah i think 
it's not like you miss out on like anything crazy. Like people always think they're missing out on something, but you're not really. The thing you do miss out on though is just social interaction and you have constant social interaction when you're in like high school, right? I hated high school because I just wanted to go ride. So mm. like I didn't like it, but I mean, yeah, I'm there. Like, I mean, you know, you're in high school, you got a girlfriend or you're hanging out with your buddies doing dumb stuff. I'm skateboarding a lot at this time. Like, so I'm like, you know, you're, you're still getting through it and enjoying it. But you know, I just wanted to go race, you know, dude, my mom and dad wouldn't let me homeschool. Like what's wrong with you? In hindsight, like, thank you. But, uh, I don't know, man, just social stuff, man. Like you got to deal with good and bad, you know, maybe you, you know, you learn how to either diffuse or get into a fight or you learn how to talk to girls or that don't think you're cool, you yeah. know, cause a lot of the, a lot of us grow up only hanging out with people, friends and girls and all that, that already know who we are. Yeah. This girl's at school didn't give a shit if I raised dirt bikes. They actually thought it was pretty weird. So it's like you deal with that. Like the other kids at school aren't like, oh, that's so-and-so that yeah. one wherever it's like, they don't care. You're just a kid. So I think that's the biggest thing that like me and Colt talk about that we got from it was I was on the weekends, I was going racing and I'm, you know, I I got a team green ride and I'm doing this and that, but then I go back home and I'm at school and I'm just like another one of the normal kids, like doing whatever everyone else does. So I think that was cool. It kind of, I don't know, for better or worse, it got just experience from it, just life experience, I guess, just how to talk to people, deal with stuff, you know? constantly getting in trouble, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? How to convince someone else to give me the answers to their test or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Awesome. Would never do that. Uh, yeah. I mean that, that's kind of like one of the things that if I was a parent of a superstar kid, I would be tripping on in a way is that like, dude, fuck school was rough for me, man. Like it was not, that was not a fun place to be. Like the day like the day I got out of school, I showed up hungover as fuck to the last day of school, and I got my diploma smelling like shit, and uh, and then I just pieced out. I was like, I cannot wait to be fucking done with this place. But the lessons I learned in that in that joint was the fucking like real lessons, you know. And I I I would be worried if I was a parent of a young superstar kid, where like you go to Loretta's, like Loretta's for a kid that's homeschooled and killing it that's probably the most social atmosphere that you'll be in all year and then you're this fucking stud at 14 15 walking around loretta's and signing autographs and like being the stud. like hey bro you ain't living in fucking reality like if you go to school there's some kid that's two years older than you that wants to fuck you up like you're getting fucked up by that kid and I mean, it's not like you're going to mm. get seriously hurt from it because you're just kids throwing punches or whatever, but it's like, there's some real lessons in humility that, that get handed out, you know, like we had a saying in my hometown, like talk shit, get hit. And it's like, if you're the fucking superstar that's rolling around at 14, signing autographs, everyone wants to be a friend. Like you just ain't living in the real world. And that is damaging. Absolutely. And like you said, I do think it just lessons in humility and how to handle that, you know, because it ain't always going to be sweet. And also, like you said, dude, I, I hated high school. I didn't like it at all. You make the most of it because you're there, but I wasn't even going to go back and get my diploma, like to get it. My mom like made me like you have to, but it's like, I didn't enjoy it, but I mean, I don't know, looking back, like it really wasn't that bad. I just, yeah. I just wanted to race. So I was like, man, I hate this place. Like, get me out of here, bro. I want to go race and why am I not winning so it's like all of it was on my mind at the time you know so yeah I didn't want to be there for that reason but I'm glad I went through all of that and then at the same time like knowing myself more maybe I'm burnt out by the time I'm 15 if I'm going hard like that at a young age you know I need to be like I said like stimulated and excited and stuff and I think if I'm doing that monotonous grind from the time I'm 12 I'll probably just be like man I don't want to do this so for somebody like me, like, who knows, man, that would have changed the course of my life if I had started mm. too soon, where going through high school, I mean, I still turned pro at like barely 18. Like, it's not like I was old, you know, I just had other stuff going on for a little bit. And then I wasn't burnt out because I desperately wanted to be doing that like so bad because I couldn't, because I was at school. 
And I just, all I wanted to do was get out of that damn place and go start writing, you know? So it was good. It kept, it makes you just, you know, you're hungry because you, you want what you can't have really. And at that time I couldn't just go be a dirt bike kid. Yeah. Yeah, dude, no, it's so, it's so true. And, you know, I think too, like I look back at high school now uh, or just like school in general. And I mean, so much of the dope shit in my life, like my taste in music, like man, Chronic 2001, like getting that CD and playing that in my Walkman and like not really even getting all of the weed references and the, you know, like the sex references, but just like feeling the beat and loving the way the shit run. And I'm like, I could rap about all this gnarly shit that I didn't know about, you know, like I could, I could fucking rap these lyrics on that. That was like a, a thing that came from, that came from two friends that I know, like Lance Grimmett and Zach McCauley. Like they were the two fucking whitest black kids I ever met in my entire life. And they're like, they were cool fucking dudes. I, I got something from them, you know? And then it's like, I was in like a band at school and you know, like that was, I would have never got into that. I wanted to ride dirt bikes, but I couldn't, I was there. And that, and I think that that, that was a place where all these other little things that I now really love in my life, they got cultivated there because I was in this place that I didn't want to be at. And I had to find a way to enjoy it. And like music was a way for me to enjoy that. And like the fucking, like definitely learn how to talk to girls in that situation. Then you start going to like school parties. And, you know, then we had like the sports side of things. We're playing school sport. Like there's a lot of like, I don't know. It's like a tough lessons that, that get learned. But I definitely think that the, you really, really learn how to cultivate some interest because you're kind of forced to be at a place you don't really want to be at. So you got to find some shit that makes it bearable. Like I'm assuming that's where your love of music came from. Yeah. And I mean, I've always, I was always kind of like a little bit of a weirdo. Like I was always kind of like doing my own thing. Like I never really wanted to be like a part of whatever the crowd was, you know, just growing up. And, uh, was I, yeah, I was at my house making, I don't know. I was, I felt like I, I didn't really, I got like two friends at school that were like my actual friends, like outside of school. Right. And, you know, speaking of the topic we were talking about earlier, one of my good friends throughout high school, his name was DJ black kid. And he rides every single weekend. Now he didn't ride growing up. None of that, but being around me all that time, he would like learn how to ride my 110, or then he would just go to the track with me and hang out. And now Dude, the other weekend he raced at a track Saturday and then a different track Sunday. Like that's, that's a beautiful sick. thing. It's so yeah. amazing. It's so amazing to see how like into it he is, you know? So um, I guess it's maybe not having like a lot of, I went, I didn't go to a big school either, you know? So I'm from a small town in Oklahoma, not a big school, not very diverse really. So I've always had kind of unique interests compared to the people I was around growing up. So I didn't really, there just wasn't anything, anything that we could like bond over really, you know, I was just kind of mm. like me and my friends were into what we were into, but like everybody else is like kind of into some other stuff that I'm not really, doesn't really get me going, you know, it doesn't really excite me. So I would go home and I remember saving up enough money to buy a MacBook and a shitty microphone and a little interface and started making rap music with uh, my friends and kind of just escalated from there after Loretta's in 2010 I won both my classes and my dad let me use some of my uh like Cowie card money you know like from back mm. in those days back to Team Green days got to use some of my money and there was like a little shed out back that was like had like a concrete floor and had sheetrock on the walls and he helped me build like a a little booth in there and like I used that money to like make my little like a little studio setup. so like my last couple of years of like high school like that's where I was at I'm out there trying to make music you know what I mean? I'm, I'm riding and I'm in there. That's really all I was doing. And my friends, they'd all be in there playing Xbox or, you know, trying to make songs or whatever. So I got super interested in it around that time. Like once I could start like driving, I'd say music for sure. That's so And sick. I love it, dude. I do it almost, almost every day, man. Still, I made a song yesterday, you know, it's like I make stuff almost every day, but I'm a little, I got, man, it, I'm a little mental sometimes. Like not in a bad way just you know i think all anyone who's good at anything is a little bit crazy you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. it can be a little little nutty at times so if i don't have a place to focus my energy and like use it for something then yeah. it's like you can you can you know it's hard because 
like I think I need to have something to put this energy into. Yeah. And for me, that's music a lot. And it's a inside hobby. So when it's 500 degrees in Florida, I don't have to be outside in the heat. So that's nice and keeps me creative. I love doing that stuff, man. I absolutely love like vocals and like engineering vocals. I love that. Like Brad loves making beats. I can't do it. I, it doesn't interest me. But vocals and stuff, I love it. I love playing with different stuff. I love it. But I also, you know, I probably need it, but I don't go to therapy. You know what I mean? Maybe I should, but I don't. So like, that's how I get stuff off my chest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think without that, I that should I'd probably go crazy at some point. But I also just love doing it. It's not like I'm doing it for any reason other than that. Man, when I had not thought about you freestyling that tent for literally years dude like maybe 10 years i had not thought that shit was fucking legendary that i remember i remember that weekend that's all anyone talked about that was there and and we were staying right next we had like a the motorhome that was right next to that and like in that in the pits that was all anyone spoke about the whole weekend uh what after that like why did you just keep it so separate why did you was it the did you think the industry would think a certain way like was there you wanted to keep a secret because like i don't know i'm kind of mad at you for fucking keeping that shit from everybody yeah i don't know i think see the thing is is like you just said with that whole thing i didn't think about it i just did it i'm the same way with my writing i'm the same way with making songs and writing as well with if i think about it or i try to like plan something I just I'm not into it and it's like it's just not the same but if I'm just fully myself luckily there's been enough people that have been able to at least understand where I'm coming from or at least maybe there's people like me that have been able to get it and they will support it Mm. and just being myself is the best thing that I can do because like people talk about my style on a bike but dude I don't practice my style on a bike that's just how I ride I don't know like, yeah. yes, I work on technique stuff, but when it comes to like doing other stuff, like, I don't know, I don't practice that. I just do stuff. You know, when I, this type of music that I make, like I'm been making stuff lately that's been a little different, but it's not on purpose. It's just like, I don't know, it's just what happens. And I think for me, some people don't have to really think about things because I'm the type of person that needs to just function off of like instinct and just do things. Because mm. I know I've got a decent, compass on what's cool and what isn't what's right and what's wrong so i i don't feel like i'll stray too far from that so i don't need to really think about it i just be me do what i do when i was younger i don't think i had that i was never i never really lacked like confidence really like my friends mess with me about being delusional sometimes but i I don't think i really liked confidence i think i just maybe i had such a one-track mind on being a champion Mm. and that's all i had wanted I wanted to prove myself, prove that I deserved it. Felt like I'd been overlooked a lot growing up. I wanted to prove myself and I was willing to do whatever I had to do to do it. Um, I think it's not really a coincidence that like 2014 was a good year, even with all the injuries and the drama that came with that leading into the season. That's the year I made my first songs. Like Mm. I made songs, but that's the first year we put anything out. Like me, Garrett Merck, Brad Frace, we put out the Packy Mage album, and in hindsight, that that I that album makes me cringe because I I didn't know what I was doing yet. Like I, it's not that good to me, but it was a a moment in our lives that I'll never forget because it was a a moment where I felt like I kind of started to understand like who I was and accept it a little bit more. Like okay, I can just be myself because for some reason people like this stuff. I don't know. I don't yeah. know why. I'm just we just did we did that. We picked Garrett up from the airport. We drove to my house and my spare bedroom had like a microphone and Brad's computer in it. And we made that whole thing in about four days. Brad mixed it, made all the beats. We laced it together. We had one of the homies uh, make the cover and we just put it out. We didn't even think about any of it. Like we did all of it so quickly. We just did it, boom, 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 gone. And then whatever. So it's like, all right, that through life you learn things by dealing with stuff like that like okay I need to get comfortable being me because that's fine because I can't Mm. do something else I tried being serious there's one point 
when I was super young where I was like, people were giving me a lot of shit for being me a little bit. Cause I was, if I'm not getting the results, I felt like when I turned pro, mm. it wasn't like I was James Stewart or Ricky Carmichael, but I had a lot of pressure from like the people around me. Like, why aren't you winning? You know? And, and I was like, well shit, dude, my second supercross I ever did, I won my heat and I got on the podium, you know? So I'm like, what are you guys pissed about? Like, I mean, I'm like, a eight, just turned 18. I'm just out here having fun. You know, this is all new to me. I'm just having a good time. And so I felt like maybe there was a lot of pressure, obviously from myself, but the people around me too, like if I would come back from an injury and get seventh, it was like, well, what, what was that? But I'm like, well, I don't know, dude, tried. You know what I mean? Seems pretty good to me. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I think that kind of made me being so young. I think that kind of made me like pull back a little and say, yeah, okay, well, fuck it then. I'll just keep this shit to myself. I'm still going to do it and I'm still being me, but like, I guess I just won't show everyone all the time. Like, I don't know. Like I I don't want to listen to it. But now that I'm older, I truly don't care strictly because I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. I've lived a lot of life. I'm okay with who I am. So I'm not worried about it. So I'm fine with being open now because I'm a grown man. I don't have to answer to anybody. Like, yes, I do have bosses, but I mean, I do whatever I want every day, you know? So, I mean, I can just be myself and it's fine. I pulled back a little too much because I think I would have been a lot better off marketing wise, all of that. If I just been me, because you know, with a little bit of results and a, a lot of bit of personality. I think you can get some stuff done and I never really lacked that. I just didn't really show it, you know? Yeah. So I was always, I've always been the annoying guy on the gate trying to mess with everyone. And even down in that environment, I'm just like messing around because it's like, I don't know. I'm like the biggest smart ass out of all my friends that I've ever met because I'm just super sarcastic. I think it's funny. Like, I don't know. But when you hide all of that, then you kind of shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. Which is where I think the younger kids aren't going to have that issue, you know, because I don't because then the fans of the sport, they're getting older, but also it's people like me now, bro, don't be so boring. Like, I don't want to see that. Yeah. Like the older generation thought that was cool, but pretending like you're tough all the time isn't cool. No one thinks that's cool, dude. Like I got problems. You got problems. It's fine. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses about my life or cry about it, but I got these issues. Guess what? So does other people. So maybe, you know, maybe that'll help other people get through stuff, you know, even the music, like I'm pretty open in that stuff, like, which is scary to put that stuff out because I'm an athlete and I don't want people knowing my personal stuff, but I mean, I don't know how else to make stuff. And if it turns out to be good, I just end up saying, well, I'm doing it, whatever. And it's uncomfortable, but then I'll have people hit me back and tell me like, they're going through the same thing or like that was whatever. And I'm nobody, dude. Like no one listens to my stuff. So the fact that even a couple people were even remotely affected by it is like, it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing, dude. So it's obviously not why I do it, but it's a nice bit of sprinkles on top of the cake. You know, it's like a, yeah. a very cool thing, but yeah, man, being all uptight and hiding everything, keeping everything close to the vest is corny because everybody's got problems, man. And maybe you can help somebody by just telling your story and being honest, you yeah. know, being honest is all you can really do. Nothing bad usually comes from that. So, yeah. And I, I think like the, I mean, it comes at a cost. Like it's what we said before about the walkout thing like that. If that's a thing you want to do and that comes from like a genuine place and you ain't like doing it for clout and you like the music thing to me, like I saw in 2010, a, super fucking talented kid that was freestyling this tent and had a hundred plus people just like losing their shit and then it's like then you got that same guy purposely kind of like doesn't release that doesn't show that side of him for like 10 years almost you know like you put out one thing so it's like it's obvious to me that you're not doing music for disingenuous reasons and i think that i I mean yeah for me personally as like a fan of yours i'd be like dude 
I think it's time. Like, I know that you ain't doing this shit for clout. I know that this is not disingenuous. It's like, this is a fucking real part of you, and it's a real cool part of you. Like, this should be something um, that you express. And then to go back to the walkout fit thing, it's like, if you suppress something that is super genuine and is like a real part of you, that takes energy too, dude. <laughs> you know and it's like if you're a team boss oh, yeah. or if you're a if you're like the air quotes the industry it's like you think that oh you think that takes away from racing no 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 what takes away from racing is a guy like fucking pushing down the shit that is like coming up from inside so if you want if you want your guy to do good if you want uh if you want the wins and if you want that feeling if you want that vibe then like it comes with this this and this it comes with fucking dope outfits it comes with making some rap shit it comes with some cool interviews and it's like that means that there's not energy and effort fucking holding that shit down dude 100% man and that's like I said the older I get the happier I get because the more I just am myself and everyone man you all gotta live your truth because whatever you are you can't be worried about what everyone's gonna think because especially like dude 2021 at this point you can be what you wanna be it's Mm. all good so for me I wanna express myself the way I wanna express myself and even like on the way here I was talking to Burner and I was joking with him like Oh, pray for me that I don't say something that gets us all canceled, dude, because, you know, yeah. I don't think before I talk most of the time. And he's like, he goes, you, you of all people, don't need to worry about it anymore. And I'm like, nah, I'm not. I'm just kidding. And he's like, just do what you do, man. Say whatever you, whatever you want to say and do your thing because, I don't know, it's fine. It works. Just be you, man. He's like, we don't care. And that's awesome too, you know, is finally getting to the point where yeah. the people around me trust me enough yeah. to just be myself and know that it's not me just being an idiot or, you know, just screwing off for no reason. Like I'm, it's just me, man. Like I'm not joking around because I'm like not taking it serious. It's just how I am. And if I don't do that, I'm so unhappy. This stuff will just, I get burnt out so quick yeah. if I'm just having to be all serious. And even during the week, Burner's like training me and stuff. And he's like, cool with me doing like the other day I landed this jump in a wheelie and wheelied all the way to the corner mid moto and my lap time wasn't different <laughs> and I was like and he was like that was sick like I, what are you doing and I'm like uh-huh. and he goes you know what's funny is I can tell you got like happy when you did it and then you were like good for the rest of the moto yeah it's like because I have a hard time yeah. staying focused during the week I get really bored so stuff like that makes me happy and so he's all he loves it because he's like sees that it works for me yeah you know so he always tells me, he's like, hey, not, not none of us, no two of us are the same. So what you need is different than what Joey needs. Yeah. As my teammate on the same bike in the same training facility, he needs different, like yeah. way different stuff than I need. Because he's a different person. He's got a different personality. So that's cool too, to be around people that aren't so, no, this is it. We're all doing this. Like I, I would never thrive in that environment because I feel like I'm a little bit unique with what I need. I've never really trained with anybody that can ride all week and be seven seconds a lap off, but still be just as delusionally confident going to the race. So I don't know. That That is crazy to dive into that for a second, like to be that far off the pace in, you know, training motos, but then to go to the races and like get hole shots and run up front and like, that's a fucking trip as a professional athlete, man. Like that's a rare deal. That's called being a gamer. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, and that's what Burner always says. He's like, "Well, you're a racer, dude. It's fine. If you want to, you don't have to practice at 100 percent because it's not what. That's not how you work." And I wonder too. Like, I don't know. Maybe me not ever practicing growing up is why I never practiced. Like, so I'd go to the races on the weekends with like zero practice and have mm. to figure out how to win because my dad's spending all of his money so that we can go to these races, and he's not gonna like scream at me because my dad was never like that. But I can tell he's pissed. If I don't do good. So, you know what I mean? I'm a little kid. I want to do good. So I'm not riding all week and I'm showing up and I'm still like figuring it out. It's like, I think you just figure it out because you have to. And then right now it's like, I don't get my confidence really from doing a hundred motos and riding with the fastest guys and making sure I'm doing this and this. It's like, I don't know. I get my confidence from just knowing I'm good on my bike because I think that's one of my strengths is just being good at riding motorcycles. So, and then, yeah, I just... 
having that confidence to still go try to get the whole shot and see what happens. Mm. I think I'm like the most optimistic like person that has had issues with depression. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm I'm super optimistic. I always think like what if? Like yeah, I know I got 12, but what if I whole shot? You never know. What if I got third? I don't know. You just never know. That's the thing is life's crazy. You never know what's going to happen. So much stuff happens every day that shouldn't happen. So who knows? So yeah, it's a it's like a a funny running joke with like me and my friends. Like super optimistic for someone who's like gets emo as shit sometimes, but you know. <laughs> I fucking love that emo shit though, man. That that stuff will never die. <laughs> I was a fucking huge emo kid. Uh, so next we year were. we all were twenty twenty two. 12 rounds of outdoors do you think you could make 12 tracks and then have a filmer come to every round and you make a like you do an album worth of material every every round you drop a new song and you run an edit to that shit like imagine some like team fried vibes with like your own deal try and get some you know get some features on there change the vibes different tracks like god damn southwick we could go all slow-mo we could get the in our feels on this one you got like you go fucking red bud we we make some like crazy party anthem shit like i don't know man could be something there could be something there i mean i could definitely release 12 songs because i mean i got hard drive full of stuff you know it's like my ADD is an issue like I'll I have so many half finished songs and like a lot of them are pretty fire too like but I just I my being able to concentrate on the one thing I'll lose it and I'll go to the next one and then I'll go to the next one and next thing I know I'm like six past that one and it's like ah shit I need to like circle back now but I could definitely do 12 songs but I also don't know how to like make something with a plan like I always just kind of like everything I do basically in life is like off of just how I feel and like emotion, right? Like yeah, I just act how I feel. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And like I said, I'm an open book. So when I make music, it's the same way. If I'm going through something or I feel a certain way, I'll make a song about it. And I got a hard time being like, oh, let's make a, let's make a party song. It's like, I can't yeah. really do that, you know? And like, I don't really live that way anyway. So like, and if I was trying to make like, oh, let's do it. I don't know. I got to be feeling it, man. It's the same thing with my writing and all of it. I got to be excited about it and feel like I'm discovering something or something. I don't know. Maybe I got some like problem with myself that I got to feel like it's a special moment all the time or some shit, but I don't know, man. It, that's what makes it so tight though is when you do make something, you get this like endorphin rush just from like yeah. excitement. That's like, dude, you can't get that from drugs. I don't think so. It's amazing. With winning races, like I've got that. Like the craziest feeling I probably ever had was winning that first moto at Colorado in 2017. Mm. Cause it was unexpected. I got like 12th the week before, you know, but I got a good start and I ended up winning by like 12 seconds that moto. And I did a trick over every single jump the last lap. Like I was really excited. Both my parents were there. Um, it was like just an amazing thing. I was so just high on like the mm. accomplishment and just like the feeling of it, you know, that and I suck second moto because I was way too amped up and I was like, I don't care. I'll go home right now. But you know what I mean? So it's like, you get that from certain things. Like I get that from making a song. If the song's good, like there's been times me and Brad about jump through the roof because we're just so excited. Like, dude, we just discovered something new. Like we figured something out that we've been trying to figure out or this song's awesome. Like, I don't know, man, just you can't get it from anything else. So it's like, you have to work at something. Like I personally have to work at something to be good enough at it, to feel good about myself because that's how you get confidence. That's how you deal with depression. That's how you deal with insecurities. That's how you deal with being unhappy. It's like lean into whatever it is that you do and go as hard as you can at that to be as good as you can at that. You'll get all of those things handled with that. Mm. You get confidence from being good at something. You can't be confident if you're not good at anything. Like it's hard. Mm -hmm. So you get confidence from being good at something. You get confidence from knowing something new. You get, you shed insecurities by being comfortable in yourself because you know that, you know, you're good at something and you don't have to prove that you are trying to be somebody, you know, you know who you are. So that's kind of the biggest thing I've learned too. Just lean into whatever it is that you love and you're good at because money isn't going to fix it. You know, a relationship isn't going to fix it. A different job's not going to fix it, but whatever it is that you love and you're good at leaning into that and being as good at that as you can be 
and having some accomplishment with that, that'll fix it. That helps. Nothing fixes everything, but that that makes it easier, you know? So for me personally, at least, like I said, can't speak for everybody, but for Justin, Lucas, Bogle, I can say that has been like a big thing for me just through that life learning. And I don't know, I think it's kind of a solid foundation to stand on. Just whatever you love, treat it right, man. Yeah, No matter what it is. I totally, totally agree, man. And I feel like there's like the wheel of progress isn't a wheel. It's a flywheel. Every single revolution that that thing builds, the weight of itself, the way that shit's built, that shit starts to generate its own momentum. And that is such an undeniable factor. And if like, for me with jiu-jitsu right and it's the exact same with motocross and this podcast like i've got these i got i try and have like these five verticals in my life i have the podcast i've got motocross i got jiu-jitsu i got reading and i got meditation that's like my five verticals in my life and i pretty much week on week on week on week on week i just stack these weeks where i just like trying to make sure all of these verticals are climbing at the same time like that's my recipe for like getting the most out of my life motocross i will never be fast at motocross i will never be good at motocross but i'm gonna try and be as good as i can be and it's like i do weirdo shit with motocross because I just there's just these little things like my fucking suspension can I got MX tech fucking the dopest shit like that I can get in my bike right now and it's like could somebody go faster than me on stock suspension 1000% do I need to have fucking sick suspension do I need to have like this super adjustable shock that I'm fucking with no it's just this tiny part of my process of like that vertical in my life getting better and better and better jiu-jitsu will i ever be a world champion at jiu-jitsu no unequivocally no but does that not mean that i can put like a fuckload of effort into it and like and it's all this it's all this like residual shit right and i feel like the there's a real uh there's a real thing and i I mean i talk about it here all the time is like you focus on the process not the goal like i remember my whole life i wanted to have like abs like my brother just always had abs like he just he ate different to me he didn't like i like fucking chocolate and and cakes and like that's just i love that shit i've never had abs just purely because of that my brother doesn't eat that he goes like a snack to him is like watermelon and a banana that shit is conducive to having abs and it was like a thing my whole life and then i but i never wanted to i never wanted it bad enough to like go in the gym and do set you know and like change my diet but jujitsu comes along and i gotta make weight for a fight oh fuck you got abs now dude so it's like the 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 goal becomes this residual side effect of the process that you're involved in so when you can align yourself with these dope like processes so the process of getting better at motocross makes me by proxy better at my life the process of getting better at jiu-jitsu by proxy affects my life the process of getting better at doing the podcast really affects my life like that's my fucking income you know and i don't need to focus on money like i focus on content i focus on delivering the product i focus on getting like having a better podcast i don't focus on making money because that's again that's the six pack that's the abs it's like there's a process that happens where if you fucking kill it at your podcast you make money it's the same with reading it's just like there's no there's no thing i want to know out of reading i read every single day i read the most random fucking shit like this year i've read a a book on genghis khan and then from there all the way to a bit uh what's the latest one it's uh uh, building entrepreneur oh fuck it's be 2.0 i forget the actual thing um 
but like yeah building entrepreneur 2.0 that's like two wildly different books i'm not searching for anything particular in these books it's like the process will give you there's like this byproduct of that meditation the same thing i do my that's like my motos dude i do fucking two 10 minute motos a day i'm not searching for anything out of that but as a residual as a byproduct of that it's like you get these things from it and i mean none of this uh there's there's no specific goal attached to this like i don't want to win a race i don't want to win any world titles i don't want to be the number one podcast in the world i don't want to meditate for 10 that like there's no goal attached to this i'm i'm attached to this process and i think that as soon as i started living my life with that mindset and not having like this goal orientated mindset then my fucking life got better and it's like the it's a brilliant book man atomic habits i recommend it to everybody and he talks about it in there and he says like everybody that is on the olympic start line of the 100 meter final has the same goal only one person reaches that goal what was different the goal wasn't different the processes were different what you did to lead up to that the the goal being achieved is a direct byproduct of the processes that you put in place and that you did daily and i think that you know that's sort of the the thing that you're in with the music like you're not even releasing these fucking songs bro you're not even putting this shit out there's, there's something in the process that makes you better well that's that's the biggest thing dude it's like it's the process but it's it gives you reason for being you know mm. like when you love something it gives you a reason to live like whatever it is whether it's whether that's your family whether that's your kids, whether that's your spouse, or whether that's your job, or whatever, dude, it doesn't matter. When you love something, it gives you a reason to wake up in the morning and live. And that's something that I figured out over the last couple of years. I was like really frustrated and, like I said, starting to get a little bit jaded, which I never wanted to be that guy ever. Because mm. that guy is, that's sad to see. It's super sad. And I was getting almost to that point, and then all this stuff happened. It's almost like God was like, hey man, I'm setting you in time out for a minute. You're gonna think about this and you're gonna yeah. come back and understand what I have given you here, which is like everything you really ever wanted. Oh, it just, oh man, it didn't go according to your plan. Ha, no one cares. This is what you have and it's amazing. Make the most of it. So I think for me, I realized if someone were to ask me like what my goals are with racing right now, like. People ask you stupid stuff like that. Like, how do you want to finish out the season? I don't know, dude. As good as I can do. Whatever yeah. that is, it is. And that's so liberating. It's such a freeing feeling to not have to like, like you said, if you, you only want abs, that's all you think about is wanting the abs. You don't think about like, damn, maybe I actually really like doing sit-ups. Like, what if I just yeah, yeah. happen to really enjoy doing crunches, bro? Like, who knows? You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, yo, you never know what can happen, dude. So like I said, like I was showing Colt two nights ago because I brought my laptop, my mic, my, my interface, all my stuff with me just to work on this week. And I'm actually really glad I did because I kind of hurt myself on Saturday. So I'm not riding this week. And I'm, I get really bored, like I said, when I don't have somewhere to put this energy so I was working on this song and I was showing him like kind of the process of it because he sat down next to me and was asking and he's like what is this and I'm like I love this shit dude like this is this yeah. is what I love doing like I'll sit here with this for hours and he's like huh and that's why he doesn't make music because it doesn't interest yeah. him yeah yeah but I'm like I'm like dude you don't understand that like this hook this part of this hook has six layers in it and I'm like harmonizing all of these myself. And he's like, that, I mean, that's crazy, but he doesn't get it because it's not what he's into. But that's the stuff that I'm into with it. Like with riding, like, dude, I can watch Stefan Everts ride, videos of Stefan Everts ride all day long, every day. Preach. James Stewart, Jeremy McGrath. Like there's a few people, Robbie Raynard. There's a few people that I can watch just ride. And it's just like so damn beautiful. And it's so cool. I can't tell you why, I just, I can just, I'm just so intrigued by it. It's just whatever, however I'm made up, that's what I like seeing. And with music, it's the same way, man. And just because I'll never be Drake or Jay-Z doesn't mean 
I don't love it and I can't like go into it and put a lot of effort and time into it because what else am I going to do with that time? You know what I mean? Like I might as well do something I really enjoy doing, you know? And I think, like I said, you get confidence, you, you get happiness, you get those endorphin rushes. Like you can't, people take drugs and people party a lot because, and we've all, we've all had fun. We've all done our thing. I'm not saying this judgmentally because obviously judge not lest ye be judged. That's we're we're all human. I've had my fun in my day too, but you try to get that feeling from other things because you, it's hard to outside get outside of yourself. But yeah. when you get it, when you get it, it's so amazing, and you can't even you know you can't get it from something else, mm. you know, because it's a mix of like happiness, confidence, achievement, like all that stuff, man. It's like, dude. If we could just accomplish something cool every day, we wouldn't need Lexapro, you feel me? But yeah. such is life. We ain't there yet. Yeah. And man, I don't know whether it's like the same for everybody else, but there's a I have a feeling inside me like there's a fucking clock ticking. And <laughs> which there is. Like there's a point in time where I will be dead as fuck. <laughs> and it's like that that shit is ticking down from whatever let's i don't know 50 fucking years uh, i don't know let's hope it's 60 years but it's like that shit is running backwards right now as i sit here right now my clock is ticking i don't know when that motherfucker's up that shit could be up tomorrow that shit could be up next week it's like i don't have time dude i don't have time to waste i don't have time to like not be fucking having a real go at this shit because it's like that, I don't know, man, for whatever reason, that's just burned into my fucking brain. That shit is running, man, and it is going to run out, and I don't want it to run out. And there's going to be like, there's a there's a really cool meditation that, that you can do. It's like a stoic philosophy type deal. Um, it's on the Waking Up app that I use, and it's called the Last Time Meditation. And you can fucking meditate on the things that you're going to do for the last time that you're really bummed that you're going to do. Like me and you, there will be a last time we ever ride a dirt bike ever. And you don't know when that is, man. And it's like, if you've got that, like I'm smiling, talking about it. And that's like a weird thing. Like it's that, Oh wait, that's like not sad for you that there's a last time. Yeah, that sucks. But it also means like, I'm going to try to ride this weekend and I want to savor that shit. Like, I don't know. That could be the last time. I fucking hope. I hope that shit ain't the last time. But it's like, and it's everything, man. There's a last time you'll ever be able to drive a car. There's a last time you'll ever kiss your mom. There's a last time you'll ever shake your dad's hand. Like, and then if you can live from that place with like that clock ticking in your head, like counting down from 50 years or fucking 20 years, whatever it is, if you can live from that place, man, it's like, it's hard for anything to suck. Because there's a that's the last time at, at some point like, you know I said this to Ping actually like he was talking about he was like yeah but I could actually never be bummed on being in traffic and I was like I was like uh, he's like I could never be stoked on being in traffic and I was like fuck off dude you could one if you're 85 years old and you can like feel that you've got a fucking heart attack coming on and there's no one around to drive you to the hospital and triple O ain't work uh, 911 ain't working. You would be so stoked to sit on the 91 for like 45 minutes, bumper to bumper, if that shit meant you were getting to the hospital. Like, there is a way you can enjoy traffic. There's a way that you could save a traffic because there's a point that that shit is fucking gone. Everything ends, man. And I look at it like I, the same way. Like, it, but it's, it's, it's the same way as what I said earlier. It's such a liberating thing because, okay, so... For me, in my personal life in the last like month, I've really kind of let go of all of that stuff. Mm. Especially once I realized, okay, I'm, I'm in search of employment for next season. I need to figure this out. I decided at that point, I said, well, you know, if it's over, it's over, but I don't want it to be over. You know, I, w- I want to keep going. So I'm just gonna let go of all the pressure, all the expectation, all the stuff that would spin me out, make me stressed out, and all the things I'd have to worry about, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna enjoy this, dude. I'm gonna enjoy it so much. I've enjoyed the last month of racing more than I've enjoyed most of my career. It's been mm. so fun. 
the group of people I'm around, like, I'm like, damn, was I missing this for a minute? Like, was I overlooking like how beautiful this is and how amazing these people are and how much fun I'm having? Like just being in this environment and being able to be a clown all day, like, and be able to hang out with my friends. Like, it's amazing. But I let go of that and I was like, you know what? If, you know, God forbid this is my last race coming up or something, you never know. Like it could be, if it is, I want to enjoy it. I don't want to be miserable at this, you know? And with life, it's like, I mean, I've lived a pretty cool, solid life at this point. If it is to end today, when I leave here, then it is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm not, I mean, don't cry for me. I'll be all right. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I've, I've had yeah. a good life, but at the same time, but if you live like that as well, it's like, for me, I'm like, well, there's no reason to keep putting everything off that you want to be or do because you just don't know how long you really got. And if you don't have much time, you might as well enjoy whatever time you got. And everyone says like they'd want to know if they were going to die. I don't think I would because I already kind of do whatever I want all the time. You know, like, like I said, I make music almost every day. I ride all week. Like I race on the weekends. Like what else would I, there's nothing else I'd want to do with my life. My friends that I'm around that I talk to every day, I love to death. You know, the people that I have in my life, I love them. I don't really have many people around. I have a bunch of excess people around baggage. so like yeah ba- excess baggage man i got nothing but people i love for the most part around me i don't only do really things i love doing so like that's amazing dude if i'm if i die tomorrow like whatever i've done exactly what i wanted to do for practically my whole life it's all good and if you can get to that point where you realize that and you know and maybe that's not how a lot of people's lives are and that's another thing i understand how fortunate i am to be able to have done that because like what the hell dude like my dad got up at five o'clock every morning and went to work you know he didn't want to do that but he did it to provide for the family and take me racing and stuff so um i know it's not like that for everybody but we all like something we all care about something we all love something so whatever that is man that's got to be the main thing have you thought uh i agree completely um have you thought about what you'll do next year if you don't get if you don't get hired by anybody like have you put much time into thinking about that yet or is that uh, across the bridge when you come to a kind of deal because i think that you're cool enough and you've done enough in this sport that if you decided to show up a1 like running your own program and doing your own thing that like i mean i personally would care enough to really want to see what went down when you've got to a1 and i feel like there's a fuck ton of other people that would be just as hot like i don't need justin bogle sitting under a semi i i don't give a fuck if you come in a u-haul i know that if you don't have you know all the the sponsors and all the shit it's like you'll be fucking dripping like your black will look dope you'll look dope your style will look dope and that guy's probably going to do pretty good if you've got a a full off season. So it's like, I don't know. Have you thought about that too much? Well, I was pretty much there a few years back, like right before I signed with the team I'm on now. Um, Me and Jimmy were putting together my own program because I had that terrible year in 2018 with JGR and I didn't really get to race for them. So obviously I didn't get to keep my ride. And then going into the next year, I had nothing like bottom of the barrel. So we were, we had a lot of good people around and sponsors that stepped up that we had relationships with. A lot of people that didn't really have to do things for us that they were doing. And then at the you know last minute, I went out and rode the KTM the Tuesday or Wednesday before Anaheim won that year. And then I raced for the team, but I've been there before. So um, yeah, I mean, I think I'll do whatever it takes. I think I'm going to end up having a landing spot so i'm not super concerned about it at this point because i don't think i need to cross that bridge yet but when i'm done yeah i've 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 put some thought into what i would do next and you know i have some ideas but we'll have to see like kind of what how it all pans out because i know for a fact that i want to race right now and i'm very motivated to get some stuff figured out with my life so that i can be better i'm very motivated to figure out just all the little things that get rid of the Epstein bar stuff and like figure out a way to finally get over that, figure out a way to just be more fit. I don't question my ability riding. I don't question my race craft. I don't question any of that. I, 
my fitness has been the issue for me. Um, the main and, issue, and, I guess. That, and that's not, but, so that's not through like a lack of training or trying. Like, are, are you just like physically having problems with your body and like your body responding to shit? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I've been dealing with this stuff for a few years now, like, and I feel like I get over it and then I don't. So I'm working with people that are, um, super smart, even just like diet, nutrition, lifestyle stuff, trying to just get my, just get all my ducks in a row so that I can just be fit again. Because I feel like if I could just be fit, I would, it's obviously more enjoyable as well. And I feel like I could do better. Yeah. And even if I couldn't, I just would rather end it all looking at myself in the mirror. Like, Hey man, we did what we could do it is what it is. We tried our best. You know, it's not like I, like I'm not really training much, but I kind of can't. And I, I got so deep in a hole from like training a lot, like more than maybe anyone I've ever met for a couple years that I, I kind of screwed myself with that one. So like I was, it's such a deep hole that I've had a hard time. And then add on top of that, all the injuries, surgeries, antibiotics from surgery, all yeah. that stuff, pain meds, yada, yada, yada. And it's like the body just takes an insane toll yeah. and just has a hard time bouncing back after eight years of that, you know, but yeah. it's doable. I just need to know what to do in a little bit of time off, which, you know, like I said, God willing, I got to figure it out at least uh, a plan. So if I, yeah. if I just got a plan with it and know where to go and like at least somewhat of a map, we'll be okay. Yeah. Cause I can get very determined and stubborn with things, but you know, you got to know what to do to be able to do that with it, you know? So yeah. I'm trying, man. I'm fucking busting my ass with all this stuff always. I'm always trying, but I know I my personality and like the way I act, like people get the, they assume that like maybe I'm not, I don't take anything serious, but you know, my friends all know that I'm, I'm pretty damn serious. Like as a human, like I take everything pretty serious actually. Like I take my relationships with my friends serious. I take what I do serious. Like all of it I take serious. Like I got couple hundred monthly listeners on my Spotify or something like probably insanely low, but I still would care so much about what that cover art looks like because yeah. damn it, that's a representation of me. You yeah. know, I care because that, that's, that has some sort of impact on my reputation one way or another. So yes, I do take a lot serious, but I can't help the fact that I like joking around, you know what I mean? Oh dude. Hey, I can fucking but, relate. Yeah. Like that, there's people that probably get so pissed off with like how deep I go into shit on this podcast. I'm like, hey, that's just me, man. I'm just a fucking super deep dude. Like, I don't know how to have, I don't know how to have a conversation another way. It's what I like. It's what I find interesting. This fucking, this is where we go. But yeah, I mean, you just kind of, yeah, you are who you are and you kind of can't do it another way. I think once you let go of like, once you accept that you can't do something another way and then you just like embrace it. I think too, like I was thinking there was a point before in the conversation where, like I definitely had to get to a point, especially as like you start doing like, okay, it's like millions of people that listen, which is fucking crazy, dude. Like it's fucking crazy. crazy. And especially in a time period where like 12 months ago, it's like, thou like not even hundreds of thousands of people. So you go from like that to that in like such a quick, short period of time. And like there was a, the, the, the period of time that shit really blew up for me was the time where I just accepted that that's what could happen. You know, like there was, there was definitely a part of me that was just like pure insecurity, man, just straight up insecurity. I'm not good enough. I'm not enough at this. People won't really like me. I don't really want to deal with the pre Like when we were talking on text just like yesterday, I was like, man, it fucking sucks. Like, there's so much shit what I say where I fucking hate that people hear that and that many people hear it and that many people know it. Like, that, fuck, that sucks to me sometimes. But you just have to accept that, like, I can't be any other way. And, like, I've done it. And it's like, lean the fuck in and just do the, like, do the best that you can at it and what will be will be and i think that yeah like the re like there was a long time where i was just kind of fighting that i just didn't accept this job all the way i guess you could say but now it's like i'm just in a position where i'm like whatever dude like this thing fucking blows up and it 
it gets even bigger than it is now cool if it doesn't cool but like i'm just gonna come i'll do my best I, i'm not gonna hold anything back i'm not gonna pull any punches and like i mean even you know like i'm fucking thinking about moving back to the u.s like i don't really want to do that but like that's the direction that this thing's going so it's like do you just embrace it and again it's like that flywheel you know what i mean it's like this shit's got its own momentum now and it's like if you deny that stuff if you if you cut yourself off from that momentum if you decide to fucking you know you're either on the right or you're off the right i guess is what i'm trying to say and it's like you can't you if you can live in the middle and that's sort of what i was doing for a while like i was doing it but i was doing it and trying to be protective i was trying to play it safe i was trying to you know like not expose myself to too much of the risk not put myself too much out there it's like you can't do that dude it's easy to stay in the middle right because it's comfortable you don't have to give too much of yourself but you can give enough of yourself to get somewhere with it i think we all every human being i don't care if you're the most confident person ever everyone's got their insecurities whatever they are we all have them dude so that's like the another thing to think about with me i'm like if i'm insecure about something everyone else is insecure about something too Mm. it is what it is whatever we all got our We all got our stuff, like nobody's perfect. God's working on all of us, you know what I'm saying? We're out here trying to get better. It is what it is, We then then that never ends. Like that never ends ever until you die. You have to just, I think the way to do life, like the best way is literally wake up, do as good as you can or whatever the hell you do and then go to sleep and then do it tomorrow. (laughs) I don't know, I don't think it's any more complicated than that. It's not any more complicated than that. Like this whole thing is so simple. Human beings are way too smart and we just figured out ways to overcomplicate every single thing that we do when none yeah. of it's that complicated like this podcast is blowing up and like we've spoke i've known you for over a decade and you didn't see this in your future but it's like i don't know am i naive enough to believe in destiny or is like is yeah. that like a thing or is it like if you're meant for something you're meant for it and you're gonna just find a way by circumstance or chance it doesn't matter like you find a way to be whatever you're supposed to be, I think, you know? And I, I hate saying stuff like that because I know it sounds a little corny, but like, whatever, bro, if it's corny, it is. But I think it's true. Like you find a way over time, mm. things happen, stuff, the wind will blow you a certain way until you finally, the you get slapped into place enough and then you end up where you're supposed to be the whole time. How are you gonna know that? Like, you don't know. And even like being open about things, dude, like, the most played song on my album that I that we put out last year is the one that's like the one I was the most like weird on because it's like yeah a slower it's more like it's like it's more like not corny but it's more just like personally yeah it's about something I guess so yeah. you, it's just like harder to let go and do that but then that's the only the one song that's played by far the most on every platform of mine so I'm like okay well if I wouldn't have put that one out, then nobody would have heard that one. And clearly some people actually like it. So same thing with the podcast, dude, it's blowing up, but whatever, you're just being you and doing whatever you do. No, not everyone is going to like everything. And that's fine too, because that's just not how humans are built. Ain't none of us the same. So some people are going to talk shit and tell you they hate your podcast and can't stand listening to you talk and your face is ugly. And then some (laughs) people are going to live and die by it and absolutely love what you do. So it's like, you know, for all of us, for me, for you, for everyone that does anything at a level that we're at, it's like, you can be you and it's okay for people to not like you. Mm. It's okay. Cause that's going to happen either way. It's fine. Yeah. Cause I don't like everybody either. I don't like everything. That's okay. Everyone can have their own opinion. You know, it's fine. The the thing the that you said about spinning regardless, man for sure the sun will come up tomorrow the uh what you said about releasing the song the most personal song is the one that hit with everybody the most i think the reason that is is because it's like you sort of said what everyone was thinking in a way you know or it's like that thing that everyone's gone through that no one wants to talk about and when you uh, again it's like that acceptance when you just accept it like that's how i'm feeling it is what it is and it's like a thing that you probably wouldn't really talk about and like most people wouldn't really talk about it resonates because people know that if it was them they wouldn't have said it 
and it, and that's the that's where respect comes from because people respect the fact that it's like oh damn like i fucking i wouldn't have said that you know and it's like dude i that that's one of the reasons why i try to be so transparent on this podcast like yeah i fucking do drugs i party i smoke weed like there's fuck i do jujitsu every day i do this i do that i fucking meditate every single day like that shit can be fucking lame to you you can be anti-fucking weed you can be you can be whatever but it's like i'm just fucking saying it because it's the truth and i think that you know it's like i always think about people like madonna or Lady Gaga. Like, they're fucking freak shows, dude. Like, that ain't the normal person. And they're, like, putting themselves out there. I'm not comparing myself to them in any way. But it's just, like, the sentiment of of them going, like, I'm going to do this thing that is, like, culturally unacceptable. Or super fucking out there and weird. But then people latch onto that because there's, like, a little bit of themselves that, like, knows that they're not comfortable to do that. And then they respect that shit. They're like fuck i want to be that or and then they start to feel like she's a voice for me madonna speaks for me because i'm not in a position or you know there's people like that would fucking love to be as open about weed as what i am like that shit helps that's a supplement to me like i think that that is the same as doing fucking i take glucosamine and magnesium and fucking cannabis like that's a fucking thing that helps my that's a supplement regime you know and there's people that aren't fortunate enough to be in a position where they can say that shit you know what i mean and even this stuff like you want to talk political shit like there's some people they just for the circumstances in their life like they can't be open with their political views and then when you come along and then you're you're down to be real about that shit and i think that's what happened when you did that interview man you put that shit on your post like the first comment i saw was ac He ain't in a fucking position like that. He can't say that shit the way that you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can, but right now he doesn't feel like he can, you know? And it's like, that's why you got the love that you got on that fucking video, bro. Is you said the shit that your peers don't want to say. Like, they don't feel comfortable to say that. They don't feel like they're in that position in their career. So, I mean, I think that's why that song hit, that interview hit. It's like when you can step outside of that box and you can you can give people a little bit of the the thing that they wish they could say, that's what hits. Well, that's a interesting thing to stumble across as well, right? It's like the most open and honest things that I've done are the things that the most people have responded well to. Yeah. Like when you the more open you get, the more you get better at doing this, the more people like it. It's like, okay, so if I'm just open and myself, like whatever, you know, obviously everybody can't, everybody doesn't feel like they can do that or be that. And honestly, not everybody should because not everyone's personality is that way. That's just how I am. I'm very open. I'm down to talk. I'll do whatever. Right. I'm, I like being on camera. Like I'm cool with all of that where somebody in, I don't know, maybe even like an Eli, he's like a lot more secretive because that's just his personality. It's not that he's mm. probably doing it on purpose. It's just, he's just more of a reserved type of person. No, neither way is right or wrong. It's just different strokes for different folks, man. We're all different. So I think for me, understanding that maybe that's something that that's I'm gift, yeah. supposed to be doing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to be like that because I have a lot of experience. I've been through a lot of stuff, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, you know? So I think if I kept it to myself, that would be slapping God in the face for all the lessons he was trying to teach me, you know what I mean? And can't be doing that. So I'm, uh, I'm learning more the older I get, like just being for me personally, just being honest and open about my circumstances and what I'm going through. People relate to it. The people that are fans of mine relate to it, whether everybody does or not, doesn't matter. The people that I interact with, you know, and, and I, I interact with like almost everybody on my like Instagram and my yeah. Twitter and things like that, because I'm, it's, fun to me to have these conversations like and make jokes with like people and like and people that cool are fans of mine that take the yeah dude and you never know like you you can have a friendship off of something like that you know what I mean like some people are really cool and you'd never meet them otherwise even mm. if it's just a quick comment that like makes that made your day so then you you comment back and it makes them happy it gives them a little happiness or whatever it's like that's what we're here for man not to bring everybody down and be miserable and 
watch CNN and Fox News or whatever the hell else it is. You know what I mean? That that ain't it. You know what I mean? We're supposed to help each other, be better, and be happy. And if you're not doing that, you're gonna be miserable. So that's why like I, I've started interacting more and just being myself because I've always wanted to, and it's been so much more enjoyable. And whether it's good or bad, like what the thing is is when people talk shit too. There's always a little bit of truth in what they're saying, you know. Yeah. So that's like, so true. it hurts only because it's kind of true. Big like, time. One guy commented on my picture the other day and was like, "Oh, I'm sure the team loves that you throw whips and do tricks all day and get 19th." And I was like, "Dude, I got 17th last weekend. <laughs> Come on now." But like, it's, I'm joking because obviously, yeah, no kidding, dude. Like, I don't want to get 19th either. But yeah. it's like, you know, what 19th was, with no tricks tame, or 19th with tricks. Yeah, man. Hey, man, you got to do something. But no, nah, it's like, well, yeah, sorry. the stuff like that, when people say something to you that's negative, it it hurts when it's got some truth to it. So you kind of have to like take a second, breathe and say, okay, well, this one guy that keeps going in on me every week has kind of got a point. Like he's just pissed at seeing me live his dream and it looks like I'm not taking it serious or it looks like I'm not taking advantage mm. of the opportunity. I get it. I get it. I understand because... A lot of those people feel like if they were in our shoes, whatever it is that mm. they love doing, whether you're Steph Curry or you're whoever, if they feel like they what they would do in your shoes is different than what you're doing, then they're going to feel like they can say shit, right? It's not true because if you were me, you'd be me, but you're not. Yeah. But it's also like, I also understand it. I also understand it. I get it. I get where you're coming from. So like, I'm not mad about it. I, I get it, but... Damn, I also can't I let it affect me because I haven't thought of it like that. Shit. That's why they're mad. I don't they're know. mad I because really they, either, but that, yeah. that, that, there's like a lot of truth in that dude. Like the, I think that, um, it's like a reflection, whatever someone gives you when it comes to negativity and comments, like that's a mirror. Like they're looking into the mirror and you know, like there was, there, there was one dude like, uh, the, guy on the youtube is like you need to stop talking about jujitsu bro i'm like okay man i don't need to do anything you need if there's anyone that needs to do something you need to not be insecure about that like that's coming from that's like that's the mirror and that's coming from somewhere in you like i'm actually just not sure uh where that need would be on my end like that's probably something that you kind of need to address but for you to at the same like, time it's like they want you to they want you to talk only about motocross stuff right but this isn't motocross tales you know like yeah. this is yeah. not strictly that like this is about other stuff and it'd be like me never talking about music or referencing yes. music or pop culture or sports or other things that I'm into and then I wouldn't be being myself and you do jujitsu daily so if you weren't talking about that it's kind of hard because like how are you not going to reference that that's your point of reference it's what you do yeah and this isn't motocross tales it's gypsy tales bro like you can talk about whatever you want it's your this is your podcast bro that, that's another thing like oh you don't want me to act like me on my podcast well that sucks because i'm probably going to so you know tune out the jujitsu stuff i guess well that makes you feel better i'll give the dude's money back to that he paid to watch this free podcast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, what what you said though, like that does make sense from the athlete's perspective of a guy that like would see you throwing like knack-knacks and shit. And it, it's like, uh, I mean, first of all, he doesn't get economics, so we can talk about that second. But there's like a, there is a, uh, a point where he's like, man, that, that guy probably had so many shitty breaks in his life. So many like shitty things happen to him. Like maybe that dude's fast as fuck and like broke his femur at a bad time you know you actually don't know what that dude went through and you're right he's like projecting this thing like hey man i got fucked out of that career and you got the career that i want and like i know i'd take it more serious than you so yeah fuck that's like a that's a pretty interesting insight man to to think that behind every single comment there's probably a story of a guy that thinks that he could do it better than you and like wishes he got that chance so I don't know, there's probably like a little bit of beauty in that for you in a way, you know, it's like, it, it is humbling. So it's like, even though that's like a fucking lame comment, like don't ever comment that ever again, anybody, <laughs> but it's like, there's a, there's probably a point where like 
there is some real beauty in that to take away like okay you should be humble like this is other people's dream like you are blessed like no you shouldn't act any differently as a result of it unless it's as you know becoming more humble and and more grateful and more generous with your time you know like you could you actually could use that that negativity to feed more positivity i've never thought of it like that yeah man and and ultimately like i'm not mad at somebody that feels that way because you know life's hard man like we've all felt like we should have been better or more than we are or wished we were more or whatever like i got the same issues man like i like i said when i turned pro i thought i was going to win everything and i haven't won anything in so long so you know what i mean like there's a little bit of that in everybody so i get it i'm not mad at nobody that's got those problems or is upset about it and outside looking in i like i said i can get it i understand what you're talking about what you can see but i'm gonna be me either way because ultimately if i don't do that i'm gonna do even worse and it ain't been that pretty lately so if i do worse than i'm doing right now like i'm gonna have to figure out a career so i'll just keep being me man having fun and you know what i think everybody would benefit from just having a little compassion and understand trying to understand you're never gonna understand but just have compassion for it like look i know you're pissed i know you think i'm an idiot but ultimately you're dealing with something too so maybe you're having a bad day and i gotta be the punching bag i'll take it i can be the punching bag because i'm secure enough with myself that have at it bud i'll be i'll still be me when i wake up tomorrow and if that makes you feel better that's fine yeah. Sometimes I need a punching bag. Usually I just turn the mic on, but you know, yeah. sometimes it's cold. <laughs> hey, so we've done three hours, but I can't let you leave without you teaching the world how to do the famous Bogle leg drop whip. It's been so long since I've really done them, honestly. I do stuff all the time, but it's just a, your standard turn down, but you got to make sure the bike's flat, maybe a little bit more than flat and you just gotta drop the leg straight down. If you stick the leg out, either which way, it doesn't look good. It's gotta dangle, you know what I mean? Like a full dangle leg, like a dead leg. You know, sometimes I do the other things where like I flop it around and stuff, but that's just me not, like my brain short circuiting going up the jump and not knowing what to do and then I just do something, which happens quite often actually. But yeah, the, the classic Granny Smith apple turn down that we used to call it back in the day, normal turn down, but you gotta make sure it's a good one. Then you gotta just let that leg drop. Like somebody just gave you the best Charlie horse of your life and you can't walk. Dangle that thing. You know what I mean? Dead weight. Damn, so that's the secret. And then obviously bring it back. Yeah, bring it back's also health. Yeah, man, I don't, yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I don't care. It, it's not like a, yeah, no, this is actually big secrets. Like we can't, we might have to clip this out actually. We could, we could cut this bit. Mm. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm, it, <laughs> it makes it makes sense that just the right. straight dead weight thing though, because uh, you could if yeah. you tried to do it, you'd be like, it's almost like overthinking it, right? Mm-hmm. It's like trying to be cool, man. That's not cool. So you just gotta like let the thing dangle there, dude. Like when you start trying to make it look cool, it doesn't. I don't know. Cause they're not really a cool thing to do, but like, it looks cool, you know? Mm. So how does it feel to have like a signature whip? Cause there's not that many, that's like one of the kind of shitty things about motocross. Like you can have style, but it's like really hard to have like a signature thing. And James had the scrub and don't fucking shoot me in the comments. I'm not comparing a drop leg whip to the scrub, but it's like, you got, yeah, come on guys. We get it. Yeah, we, 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 we know where we're at. James is the fuck man. But you've got this drop leg whip and there's not a lot of people that have got like a signature thing. And you've always had like, even from when you were at AM, it was always just a flick of the wrist and you were really dropping that elbow in. And there was always like signature bogle swag. And then a lot of people have uh, have adopted that swag. So it's you're, you're in, in my opinion, you're in rare company of people that have like bought a thing that's like unequivocally your thing. Well, that's cool. And I appreciate you saying that. I didn't invent it. Like I would never take credit for like inventing a one legged whip. You know what I mean? Like I just did it a lot and I think I made it look cool. So then people started associating it with me and whatever. And I just thought they were fun. I just thought they looked dope. Like 
I don't know, I had a logo made when I was like younger that one of the guys made that I knew and it just looked fire. Like, so I was, we just kind of ran with it and whatever. But yeah, man, I mean, and the thing is with like style and speed and stuff and like tricks or whatever it is, it's like everyone's going to eventually scrub. Mm. It's like James doesn't own the scrub. He didn't invent the scrub either. He just did it the best, you know? So you can't be like, oh, so-and-so's, yeah, dude, everyone do it. I, I don't care. I, everyone do everything, bro. Like, nah, it's to, all good. To the, victor, you know? to the victor go the spoils, bro. James did the scrub to the hey. level of like ridiculousness. And then- Of course, you, of course. So to the winner goes the spoils. And then I feel like it's the same with this, like the leg drop. It's like, you ain't the first person to do it, but to the winner goes the spoils. Amen. Hey, I'll take it. Like I said, I'll take it. I'll take that credit. Whether it's due or not, I'll take it. Because I had a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, like I said, with the style thing, I've always just kind of just done whatever. And it's turned out to be something eventually. So whatever, man, I'll take it. Well, Justin Lucas Bogle, I appreciate you, bro. I'm pretty uh I'm pretty pumped that after uh ten years we've uh got back for like a real serious chat. It's been a it's been a hot minute. Yes, sir. Long time and, and straight to getting deep, man. Philosophical life stuff, man. Giving the people what they want, what they need. Not what they want, but what they need. Yeah, preach. Hey, that should be like Gypsy Tales model motto. This ain't what you fucking <laughs> want, homie. This is what you need to hear. It's not a bad one. Nah, I ain't claiming that though. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you, dude, and um, good luck this weekend. I'm um, yeah, I'll be watching. I'll be watching, and I know, I know that uh, regardless of the finish, there's gonna be some fucking photos in every gallery of uh, of. Justin Bogle throwing that shit around and uh, doing some weird funky shit. So, um, yeah, I'll be watching, bro. And uh, appreciate it. I appreciate yes, your honesty. Sir. I know there was, you had some nerves, but I don't think you said anything fucking crazy. Um, and yeah, it's cool, man. It's, it's fucking cool, too. Like, the, you know, to talk about like the race stuff and like James and that whole deal, like to have someone that's like willing to even entertain that conversation, not just like immediately want to shy away from it. Like, because it's cool, man. Like, I don't think that's negative. And, you know, the concussion stuff. And it's like, this is fucking cool shit to talk about. It's real, dude. Like, this shit happened. This shit happens whether we're going to talk about it or not, you know? So it's like, feel like there's only good things can come from, like, normalizing shit that, you know, should be talked about that isn't. Well, it's like, ultimately, I can only speak on my own experience, right? I can't talk about anyone else's, but that's all I can do. So if I talk about my own experience and it's there's a correlation somewhere with whatever it is where you know like I said like the the mental stuff or any of the other things or whatever we've all dealt with something so if it relates to other people or whatever cool man like I said we all got we all got issues sometimes so part of the conversation man ain't nobody out here trying to slander nobody or do anything weird no appreciate it dude well um well yeah thanks so much man and um yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you through some videos and links and shit like that. And, um, and yeah, I just, yeah, appreciate you coming on and giving the time, bro. Hell yeah, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.